Ready? Mm -hmm. uh, let me start off today. This is the meeting of the Board of Appeal meeting for um, December 8th by congratulating Jessica Thomas. She's the new assistant commissioner and will be um, uh, continuing Miss Ambassador. So welcome, uh, Jessica. Thank you. So uh, the Zoning Board of Appeal for um, December 8th is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law and executive order of Governor Baker suspending certain provisions thereof due to the ongoing public health crisis. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the WebEx event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing by telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on screen and you will remain muted until administratively unmuted when asked to comment. As with our in-person meetings, comments in support will be followed by comments in opposition. The, the order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting will be limited by the chair as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is, those individuals who live closest to the project. To comment on an appeal, please click the raise your hand icon in the application via the WebEx event platform. To raise your hand, click um, the participant information icon. From there, find your name and on the lower right hand side, you should see a hand raising icon. Click the icon and your hand will be virtually raised. Click it again and your hand should go down. If you are connected to this hearing by telephone, please press star three to raise your hand. Just to, um, to repeat that again, if you are connecting by uh, telephone, please press star three to hear your, to raise your hand. Those who called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first, and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time, and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Before we start, I'd like to take a roll call of board members. Um, Mr. Fortune. Here, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich. Here. Mr. Rogerio. Here. Mr. Legris. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Kendall. Mr. DeVoe. Present. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can we, uh, Jessica, can you please tell me when Mr. Kendall joins? Um, and please, all members, make sure that your uh, video is streaming. Um, I'd like to just confirm, um, Jeff, I, Jeff Hampton from the BPD, I thought I heard you earlier. You did. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Okay, uh, so let's begin. Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is the hearing minutes of the July 7th, 2020, July 14th, 2020, and July 21st, 2020 minutes meetings. I need a motion. motion. May I have a motion? motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next first call, uh, first case for extension, calling BOA 787-634. 500 to 502 A East Broadway. <laughs> Madam Chair, I believe this won't expire till 5 3 of 2021, but I'll let Mr. Christopher maybe explain. Uh, some name and address for the record, please. Uh, 
Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is James Christopher of RCALC with the business address of 415 Deposit Ave. Um, yeah, we're working on this is 500 and 502 East Broadway approved before this board, uh, and the decision is set to expire in a few months. We are working on the building permit drawings now and have filed. Uh, we just thought that it would be uh, beneficial to seek the uh, extension in case we hit any snags and, and as a matter of uh, precaution. You know, I appreciate uh, you jumping the gun, Mr. Christopher, uh, but can we hold off on this until we are closer to the date? Because then you can inform us whether you, in fact, do or do not need. We are reluctant to um, to give too many extensions, so we just want you to be cautious and give us a heads up when we get closer to the date. Okay, okay. so yeah. we'll, we'll see you in uh, yeah. April. Madam Chair, the next case is with Mr. Christopher. It's the same situation. Okay, Mr. Christopher, I'm looking forward to seeing you again in April. All Thank right. You. Okay, see you in the new year. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I should call you into the record, though, just so just for uh, yes, safety. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. So I'm going to recall both cases, and then we'll we'll go from there. So case BOA 787634, 500 to 502 East Broadway. Case BOA 832, 215, 36 Spring Garden Street. So the motion basically is we'll see them in 2020. They technically don't expire until 53 and 510, respectively, of 2021. Exactly. So, so do we need a motion or anything or no? Uh, I don't, oh yeah, let's just get a motion. I'll make a, I'll yeah. a motion to defer. Second. Second. Mr. Duval. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case for building code. Calling BOA 112-9365-103 Warren Avenue. This is, <clears throat> this is the ninth edition 780 CMR 1011 install a roof deck. The violations of 1011.12.2 roof access, where, where a stairway is provided to a roof, access to the roof shall be provided through a penthouse complying with 1510.2. The exception in buildings without an occupied roof, access to the roof shall be permitted to a roof hatch or strap, trap door not less than 16 square feet in area and having a minimum dimension of two feet. Name and address for the record, please. John Moran, Alpine Advisory Services, Alpine Way, Boston, Mass. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. We are seeking relief from the requirement of a penthouse access to a roof deck, which is code compliant, uh, suggesting that a safety compliant alternative is the proposed hatch, which is the customary means of egress to roof decks in the South End Historic District. The hatch will maintain the historic streetscape and roofscape <coughs> homogeneity of the area, which is a defining characteristic of the landmarks district. Okay, hold on. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich? Yeah, the, uh, the drawing show hatch, and it, as, as you certainly know, that we, uh, we are in favor of that. May I have a motion, please? Motion, motion to approve. Second, Joe. Second, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to call the 930 hearings. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals? Please address before you talk. Um, Secretary, this is Mike Ross. The address is 95-97 Addison Street. Thank you. This for the for the record calling BOA 1099054 95 to 97 Addison Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, hi, uh, um, uh, Madam Chair, Members of Board. This is uh, Mike Ross with the business address of One International Place uh, Attorney. I have one more after this. Uh, we're working with the mayor's office as well as the district city council to work out some remaining issues relating to community concerns. We've been at it for quite some time on this project and would ask for a deferral. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The, the uh, date will be March 23rd at 1230. Mr. Ross, what's the other address? 1201 Saratoga Street. For the record, calling BOA 110 Saratoga Street. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Chair, members of the board, um, Mike Ross. Um, Attorney, uh, again, this is a similar. Uh, we've been at it around the same amount of time, uh, also in East Boston, uh, and we would defer just to get a little bit more time to work through any of the community concerns that have been raised. 
Thank you. Um, is it, I noticed the applicant on both cases are the, is the same. Um, is is there a good back and forth that's occurring, or is it stalled in some way? Uh, it, there is a good back and forth. There's been um, probably six versions of this building uh, gradually getting smaller and smaller, um, and uh, <laughs> we're 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 getting, okay. we're getting close. Okay. So may I have a motion, please? Motion to defer, Madam Chair. Is there a second? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. We'll have a date of uh, March 23rd at 12.30. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? Address, please. Mr. Fortune, uh, 200 L Street, please. Thank you. For the record, calling VOA 111 200 L Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, members, unfortunately, the revised plans uh, have not been stamped by ISD, so they're not available for the board to see this morning. Therefore, I'm uh, going to have to ask for a deferral, please. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date, please. We have a date of March 23rd at 12.30. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals to 9.30? Address, please. Are there any raised hands, Madam Ambassador? Um, no, sir. Call the first case. BOA 108-5883-197. Chelsea Street. This is a rehab existing structure. Erect a vertical addition onto the existing building. Change oxygen to a larger mat on the first floor and three residential units above. The violation is Article 2017-5. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 9. A lot area for additional dwelling units is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9. The floor gate ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9. The building height is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restriction. Article 53, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. And Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non conforming use. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Richard Lenz, 245 Thunder Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner, Jay. Um, Madam, Madam Chair, um, Attorney Lenz, one second. Madam Chair, uh, Coastal Lakers is recusing himself. Okay, so this uh, is Mr. Kendall on. Yes. Don't see his name. Yeah. Good morning, Madam Chair. I believe I'd seen his name on there. Yeah, he's on. Okay, okay. So this is a six member board. We can go ahead with this, with hearing this case. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a, a pre existing non conforming use, a non conforming structure uh, located in, uh, I guess, would best described as Lower Eagle Hill. Uh, it consists of a laundromat at the ground level with two residential units above. Our proposal uh, involves a complete rehabilitation of the entire building, uh, including upgrades to life safety. Uh, we are proposing a change of occupancy from the uh, existing conditions of two units in a laundromat to three units in a laundromat. Uh, it is located in the 3F2000 district. And while the use for the three residential units would be permissible under Article 53, uh, the inclusion of the laundromat, which serves a uh, broader neighborhood, uh, would continue a non-conformity. So we do require relief uh, for that proposed use. Um, as you can see from the photos, this is a uh, corner condition where the uh, structure is located at the corner of uh, Chelsea Marion Street. Uh, and we are proposing a vertical addition uh, with no roof uh, And that would accommodate the third proposed unit uh, where that we're seeking. Uh, the, the laundromat uh, pretty much occupies the lower level as well as a portion of the basement level. Uh, that will remain. Uh, we will reprogram the uh, two existing units, uh, which are currently three bedroom, one bath. And then the addition of the third unit would also be a three bedroom, one bath. This is, and this is currently uh, operated as a rental project. It will continue as rental uh, with that additional unit uh, being added. 
So uh, hold on, hold on, counselor. Um, so the how how high is this going? So the total height of the building is 44 feet, uh, and the allowable height limit is 35. Uh, the building presently uh, probably sits at about 33 feet uh, based upon the current conditions. There is an existing headhouse on the building. Obviously, that would be removed uh, in exchange for the uh, additional level. Uh, we are not proposing any roof deck above the fourth level, uh, and uh, we certainly uh, received a, a good response from the neighborhood as well as the direct of Butters, uh, especially because we are keeping the laundromat at the lower level. Uh, this will also involve uh, a substantial improvement to the exterior of the building. I know so, we. Okay, so let me just ask you. So, you cited the roof structure restrictions. Did you at some point have a deck up there? We did not, but I, my understanding of Article 53 is uh, the rooftop restrictions would be triggered on any expansion of the existing building above the current roof line. Okay, so hold on. How are the plans, Mr. Olick? Oh, the drawings, okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support. During the community process, this proposal received strong support from the Abares and from the um, Maverick Central Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have no raised hands. I have a motion. A motion to approve with design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Much. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1130385, 33 to 35 Maverick Square. This is a change orders from a laundromat with four residential units to retail office with five residential units. The violation is Article 53, Section 12, the full air ratio is excessive. Article 27-5 is in the East Boston iPod. And Article 53, Section 56, insufficient parking for additional unit. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, uh, members of the board. Attorney Laureen Scatino with a business address of 245 Sumner Street, Suite 110 in East Boston. Here today on 3335 Maverick Square. Um, very quickly, this is um, actually a proposal to make the building jacket meet what is currently there that has been there since the 90s um, in doing some work. Um, my client realized that the building jacket did not meet what's inside the actual building. So there hasn't been a laundromat there in quite some time. It's actually a jewelry store on the retail level. And there are five units. Unit one is a 465 square foot studio. Unit two is a 417 square foot studio. Unit three, 472 square foot studio. Unit four, 472 square foot one bed. And unit five is a 458 square foot one bedroom. There'll be no change to the footprint of the building. This would so all be done internally. Councilor, Councilor, could you hold on for a second? Sure. Uh, I just want to make sure how would how would these conversions? How did these conversions happen off the residential space from four residential to five residential? <clears throat> Were they done without permit, or what happened? Please tell us. I can't speak to the past. When my client purchased the property in 1998, this is how he purchased the property. So it does appear that, um, you know, a CO never issued for how the building was. Um, so I can only speak to as from when my client has now had it. And has to have taxes been paid as a five or as a four? Um, I don't know off the top of my head um, on that. Okay, are there, is there anything in, is the applicant on? Can he speak or she speak? speak the, applicant, the applicant is on, Anthony Giacalone, if they could unmute him. Mr. Jack Mahoney? I don't see that name. Councilor, what's Jack the name Mahoney. again? 
Sorry. Jeff Hanny, I, he, Jeff he just informed me he has been paying them as a five. He has been paying as a five. Okay. Yes. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, well, they're, they're, I would say, not sufficiently informative because if you're going from a four to a five, then there ought to be existing versus proposed, and it's only proposed. I don't, I don't see how. Um, I mean, it sounds like it's a question of legalizing. I can't quite figure this out. Uh, what, uh, uh, it, that, that's exactly what they're, the applicant is requesting is to legalize the units. Uh, however, I just want to make sure that you are comfortable with the sizes of the units. They're I, very small. I mean, they're all very small. They're all, you know, they're 450 to 500, um, uh, at least the ones where there's measurements shown. And, uh, so it's a series of small studio units. Okay. Um, I, I noticed the one that we have on the first floor plan. There is no, um, there is no, um, must be a studio which has a sleeping nook. Okay, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to give the recording support. There's a community process. The applicant address most of the concerns of the Abares, and this proposal receives support from the Abares and from Maverick Central Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support of this proposal. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have to raise hands. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'm going to make a motion to uh, approve, I think, basically given that these are existing conditions. I'll second that, Joe. I too. Um, anybody in opposition? Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. A second. Yeah. All those in favor, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> any any uh, opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We just started, Madam Chair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I was wondering. Calling, calling the next case, calling BOA 1053851, 92 Bennington Street. This is to build a new roof deck for the exclusive unit of Unit 3. The violation of Article 2017, this is in the East Boston iPod, Article 53, Section 52, Roof Structure Restrictions. The open roof deck shall be accessed by a roof hatch. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant. This is an amendment to uh, a long form permit that was issued to renovate the three units in this building as of right. No zoning relief was required for the renovation. The matter before you is on an amendment permit solely for uh, roof deck. Um, well, they're going to do it um, 196. Virtually. What are we? I'm sorry, there's background noise. Can we mute Karen Foley, please? What, what's the size of the deck, please? Um, the roof deck, Madam Chair, is 196 square feet. And the two items. OK, hold on. And it's accessed by the roof hatch. Um, Mr. Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? Um, Mr. Lucas, the drawings show uh, a head house. Why is there a head house in the drawings if it's going to be accessed by hatch? Have we lost Mr. Lucas? It looks like we have. Let's see him here. We'll call it again. Oh, what? No, Mark. Uh, yeah, he's having, looks like he's having some issues with this. Uh, just trying to get back in. I'm the architect for this oh, project. I can oh, speak to sorry, 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 I just lost my internet connection. I'm back. Sorry. I'm not sure where I cut out, but my internet uh, cut out on me. I'm so sorry. I so, uh, did you hear the question? I did not. Mr. Lucas, I, I was, uh, the, you said, you said that this was the uh, roof deck would be accessed by a hatch, but the drawing show a head house. So I'm curious as to why there's a head house there. No, I'm sorry. Um, the the access 
the, the citation was for a hatch, but the proposal is to access the roof deck by the pre-existing head house um, that existed when my client purchased the building, as shown on the plans. Wait, wait, now, now I'm confused. In your initial presentation, you said it was going to be accessed by hatch. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Access through the pre-existing head house. And what, okay. and what tells us that it's pre-existing? Because it's being rehab, right? The building, the work in the building has already been done. The units are complete. Um, this amendment permit was filed back in January and then got just got caught in COVID. But the renovations were completed. The certificate of occupancy has been issued. The units have been sold. And my client, um, Megan Ayers, is on the line, as is Josh Smith, the architect. And they are both prepared to give testimony that the head house was existing when they purchased the building and, and prior to the renovations that were conducted. So I, again, I'm confused because the advertisement and the agenda says that it should be accessed by hatch. Is that an error? Um, I think that relates to the uh, violation comments on the refusal letter, Mr. Ehrlich. It says open roof deck shall be access by roof hatch. That's the violation. And the conditional use permit that we seek under Article 53, Section 52 is to access the roof deck through the pre-existing head house. So I need verification that that head house was not put in during the reconstruction because we're seeing we're seeing a couple of these pop up and we just want to ensure that um, we are sticking and the applicants understand that the the head house is something that we will not we will not support understood and um, megan Ayers, if uh, a y r e s jessica thomas if you could unmute her she is yes i just unmuted myself um so yes i can attest to the fact that the head house was there it was pre-existing when we purchased the property uh we're not touching it we're just um you know seeking approval for the deck itself um, but we have, we're not touching the head house that and was pre-existing. And do you know if that head house was legal or was it just done without permit? Um, that I'm uncertain of when we purchased it. And how long have you had the building for? Um, it has been about a year and a half now. Okay. Do, do you, Madam, I just got a question. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm looking at like Google Earth pictures um do you own 90 as well is that no okay no so you want to you want to kind of do exactly what nine did. exactly because i'm looking okay any any so other, almost like a mirror image okay hold on any other questions from the board is no, I, i'm just a little surprised that uh, i mean it's a, it's a three-story house uh, it, uh, and there's no elevator so i'm just uh, and there had been no roof deck so i'm just a little surprised there is a head house but if it's there it's there yeah i, I because nobody is under oath i suppose we just have to uh, I mean, I'm, looking at the google, I'm looking at the google earth image and the building it, it looks like this head house has been there for a while okay is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Yeah. Nina Tepeli, with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, who would like to hone the recording support during the process. This proposal received support from the Avares and Maverick Central Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I see no raise hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case. <coughs> Calling DOA 1071304, 22 Paris Street. This is a change of architecture to an existing two family dwelling to a four family dwelling. And construct a new third story rear addition, new rear porches, roof deck. The violations Article 27T, Section 9, this is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 8, a basement apartment is forbidden. Article 53, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 53, Section 9, the lot area for additional dwelling units is insufficient. 
Article 53, Section 9, the foliar ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building height is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restrictions. And Article 53, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscana with an address of 11 Beacon Street. Um, presenting the petitioner, and we also have Adam Glassman is the architect on this project. Uh, this project uh, description has changed, and I just wanted to go over that change from what was read into the record, and the plans will reflect that, that Mr. Ehrlich has. Uh, the proposal is to change the occupancy of the existing two-family residential dwelling to a three-family dwelling. Uh, we are also proposing to erect a rear addition to the third story. Uh, rear egress stairs and a roof deck and completely renovate the building as well. The previous proposal mentioned four units, it's now three. Um, just to go over the and so how, does it, how does it affect your violations, Councillor? Yeah, Madam Chair, so we actually were able to remove MFR because that's a forbidden use in this area going down to a three. We also removed the basement apartment forbidden use violation. We're now just extending living space as well. We've also reduced the FAR uh, violation in our process as well. Okay, so tell us about the units, the square footage, and how this, this third unit is being accommodated. Sure, um, so the basement right now, that's the lower level of unit one. That would house one bedroom and one bath. It has a ceiling height of seven foot six. Um, there would be a bedroom and office. Both would have full egress windows uh, into the uh, into window wells, and each unit would have their mechanicals inside the unit, so no common mechanical space. We would then go up to the first floor uh, together with the basement. That unit is 1,800 square feet. Um, that is a three bedroom and three bath unit, uh, and that would have two means of egress on the first floor as well. The second uh, floor has unit two. That's a three bedroom, two bath uh, with rare egress stairs. That's a 950 square foot unit. And also mechanicals are inside that unit. The third floor, uh, if you look at the photo of the building, the front of the building already has uh, a top floor space. We're just adding to the rear of that infilling. That would be a three bedroom, two bath with rare egress stair at 1,050 square feet. Um, and that would have seven foot seven ceiling height for that top floor. Uh, then there would be an exclusive roof deck for that unit accessed through an exclusive staircase that would go up to the top floor. So there's no head house uh, for that uh, roof deck. And the roof deck is 27 feet uh, by 14.5, so about 390 square foot roof deck in the rear of the building. Um, the violations, as was mentioned, and changed. So uh, additional lot area, we've got 665 square feet for the new unit. We need 1,000, so that's pre-existing. Uh, FAR existing is 1.7. We're proposing 2.3, and what's allowed is 1.0. Um, in height, we're existing because of the front of the building already goes up 38 feet, two inches. So we are slightly over from what's required of 35 feet. Uh, open space, uh, we have 270 square feet per dwelling unit and 300 is required. Side yard, it's attached, so that's zero. Uh, that's a pre-existing violation. Um, our rear yard existing is 19 feet. And with the rear egress stairs, we're going to 12 and a half feet. 40 would be required. And we are not able to create any parking, but we're five minutes from Maverick T Station. So, uh, Councillor, if I'm uh, uh, Colette, can you please roll back to the basement, the proposed plans? Am I reading these plans right that that bedroom number three that's in the basement does not have a window well or does not have a window? So the, or is that, so binary, that small uh, window in the rear is the only access to light? So the there is going to be egress window well for back bedroom, 
and as well as the office. So on A1.1, there is where those two back spaces meet. You can see sort of where that, where the window wells will be. And those are gonna be 30 inches floor sill. Okay. Uh, how are the plants, Mr. Ehrlich? Well, unfortunately, uh, these are the only plans that I did uh, that were not <clears throat> made available for me to preview. So I'm looking at the plans at the same time as you are. Um, uh, Mr. Drago, the, the usual questions that we have about adding living space to basement, it's hard to tell, uh, since I didn't get a chance to look at them, uh, what the relationship is to grade and whether there's really adequate. What's the floor? to uh, in the basement, what's the floor to grade height? Um, and also, uh, you did mention the sit with the windowsill, but it, please go over all that again. Okay, so they're in the basement. The ceiling height is seven foot six. Yeah. Um, it, it, it does not have a walkout, but we have egress windows in the bedroom and in the office. So, and both of those were 30 inches. So the four by six floor to sill. How far, how far, how far is the floor of the basin below grade? I don't know. We have the architect on Adam Glassman. He may be better able to. to I mean, this, this is a problem that we are seeing over and over and over and over again, which is basements that were intended that are dark and below grade that are intended for storage are now being uh, repurposed for a living space and that's not what they uh, were intended for nor should that what they be is it's, uh, you know, it's one thing to have a playroom in there but or even an office but to have a bedroom uh, just doesn't make any sense but but i can't tell because i don't have the plans in front of me you know so. um i i just mr glassman um and counselor can you guys make sure because um jeff we're seeing so many of these basements yeah. in easty that just don't make sense uh, we are not trying to move back to those overcrowded days of, 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 your, of years gone by. Um, and this is just exactly what's happening is this is a space that's not calm and welcoming. And Mr. Olick and the rest of the board members, we can approve the project, but eliminate that bedroom in the basement. Uh, um, I'd, I'd, still like, I'd still like an answer on what the, the height is from the basement floor to grade. So the architect is on. I don't know if Adam Glassman, if he's muted. Adam, please, t please hustle and tell us the information, please. I don't see Adam Glassman, but I see Adam Gaffin. He's on the phone. He's not. He wasn't able to get on the computer, but uh, I know he's on the phone. Don't um, see him this time. Can you raise your hand? Oh, hold on. Yeah. I also know, just so you know, we did have a, this was proposed a while back as a full basement unit. We removed you know, counselor, counselor, we understand all process, okay. blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, this is the, the, the place where decisions get made. All right. I've unmuted caller 777. Is that you, Adam? I see a hand raise. Hello. Hi. Hello. The lady. No, we need somebody else. Okay, I don't see any other hand. I'm not sure if he's still if he's on the call. Uh, Adam, if you're on the call, can you raise your hand by pressing star three? In the meantime, um, Ms. Ambassador, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go in support of this proposal during the community process. The applicant work with the abutters and address most of their concerns. This proposal also receives support yeah. from Maverick Neighborhood Central Association, and we receive six letters of support from the abutters. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on record in support. Okay. And Adam, are you calling from 412? You've been unmuted. Is that you? Yes, that's me. I'm sorry about okay. that. So mm -hmm. the the average grade um, is two feet below the first floor. Um, and the basement floor is about uh, five and a half feet below average grade. Uh, now, this does not include the enormous window well um, that we have in the back that provides escape uh, egress for both the bedroom and the office. 
Well, Madam Chair, I, uh, I mean, technically with the window wells, it is code compliant, but that five feet below grade is, is uh, I don't think what we're looking for. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, Ms. Ambassador, any other raised hands? I see no other raised hands. Madam uh, Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support and letters of opposition. Okay. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, B, uh, with two provisos, BPDA design review with one, and second, that there be no bedrooms in the basement. I'll second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 1098399, 41 Mount Vernon Street. This is to renovate the existing three family, extend living space into the basement. New second floor bay window, construct a rear addition and deck at the third level and erect a roof deck. The violation of Article 62, Section 25, roof structure restrictions, and Article 62, Section 8, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, this is a proposal uh, for uh, a renovation of an existing three-family dwelling at 41 Mount Vernon Street uh, in Charlestown. Uh, being proposed here is an extension of living space into the basement, which I will, of course, address, uh, a new second-floor bay window, uh, and uh, construction of a rear addition uh, on the third-floor level of the building with a deck at the rear of that for the use of the unit below and then a roof deck for the use of Unit 3. Uh, the plans that are showing on the screen now are revised plans and to answer uh, an anticipated question from the board the revised plans do eliminate one of the recited zoning code violations uh, the violation the setback violation is removed uh, the setback violation owed to the proposed third floor addition it was slightly violative of the code redesign of the plan eliminated that violation leaving two violations roof structure restrictions uh, related to the uh, the decks and uh, an far uh, violation uh, this is article 62 it's a 3 of 2000 zoning district the maximum far here is 2.0 uh, with the addition and extension of living space uh, the far of the proposed renovation is approximately 2.18 or about 400 square feet over maximum allowed um, Madam Chair, it's currently three units in the building. Um, uh, the building, uh, the first unit uh, is uh, a two bedroom uh, unit. There's a Excuse unit me. two is. Councilor, can you hold on for a second? Uh, Colette, can you please go to the proposed the basement and first floor? Um, uh, proposed is this existing this is existing that's existing correct can we get, yeah can we get proposed please go ahead councillor sure would you like actually i it was it was just an issue uh would you like me actually to start with the with the basement as proposed uh, because uh, that'll just continue i know there was just a conversation about basement living space and bedrooms yes, please go ahead so in this one right on on sheet a1 uh since propo uh, since an expansion into the basement is being proposed um it is showing as uh, two bedrooms down there um the rear bedroom was actually intended as i think a study and should be a study my, my client would certainly change that uh, from a bedroom uh floor to ceiling height down there is eight feet uh the front bedroom uh has a t has an egress window uh, that's on the mount vernon street side of the building um, and it does benefit from uh, light because there is sort of a patio area on that side of the building in and uh, you know there would be natural light there if um, if we could scroll down uh, which might help uh, the board and, and mr. Ehrlich uh, sheet a4 will also address uh, visually uh, questions that the board might have about the uh, it's a cross-section of the building that shows the basement level uh, and its relationship uh, to grade so that the board can see the um, you know the existence of there of a bulkhead to the basement uh, an area way uh, for the bedroom window I don't think we go quite as far uh, we are at a what what um, what sheet are we on uh, yeah we only have the a three there is no a four did you mean a two 
We have we have elevations that show A1, A2, and A3 show elevations uh, in relation to grade. It, the, the basement is significantly below grade. Significantly, okay. Yes. So uh, understanding the previous conversations about about bedrooms, um, you know, my client is certainly willing to abide by whatever whatever the board might decide with respect to that. Um, and that is that is the violation, the FAR, and then the decks. And just very briefly on the decks, uh, the roof deck uh, is approximately nine feet ten inches by twenty feet nine inches, accessed by hatch. And then the third floor deck is smaller. That's about twelve feet by thirteen feet. That is also uh, accessed by hatch. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, uh, drawings are what Mr. Maranci described, uh, uh, hatch uh, access to the roof deck, which is fine, and the basement is well below grade and should not have any bedroom to it. They currently do, and if we, if we approve it, we should eliminate that. Okay, is anybody here to speak in support? Madam Chair, members of the board, Quinlan Locke with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. The Barter's meeting was held back in July, um, July 30th, uh, attended by many neighbors in the area. Um, while we are supporting, we do want to make sure that the board is aware there is opposition at um, the neighbors next door from 39, specific to the addition of the third floor and the roof decks. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on record in support of this proposal and would ask that the proponent continue to work with the abutters on their concerns. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have two raised hands. Okay, let's go for it. Madam Chair, before that, uh, the Secretary here, we have numerous letters of support and numerous letters of opposition as well. <laughs> Uh oh, sounds like fun for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, hear from the abutters, please. Okay, Annie, you've been unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. I'm Ani Yasalian. I'm a direct abutter. I live at 39 Mount Vernon Street, Unit 3. So this is a two floor unit, and it's been my home for more than 20 years. I have three brief points, and then I'll stop. The first point is the applicant doesn't meet any of the legal requirements under Section 7-3 of the Zoning Code to obtain these variances. This house is operated as a residential three-family for many years, so there are no special circumstances or conditions at this property required by the code to approve this. Next. So, I, uh, sorry, may I just ask, is your op what is your opposition based on? Is it based on the roof decks or is it the rear addition? The rear addition, I'd like to make this is probably my next point, is that the rear the rear addition and the roof deck, the rear addition, it puts my home in a shadow for a substantial part of the day. And I'm gonna lose a lot of fresh air and light. And where I have open views outside some of my den windows, I'm gonna be looking at a wall. So I've submitted a sunlight and shadow study that's in your packet, and it was done by an intern architect at Elkis Manfredi. And if you have a moment, I realize time is tight, but there's exhibits. Exhibit one, it shows how the expansion basically blocks all the light coming into my den, my living room, my kitchen areas. I work from home. I'm self-employed. I've been working from home for 15 years. This is going to really detract from the quality of my life and my living conditions and how I work. Um, as I shared my in the exhibit two, you're going to see that the rear story completely blocks anything looking out of my den windows. So instead of seeing a skyline and trees, I'm looking at a solid wall, you know, six feet away. Thank you. Uh, then I. All right, I have another. I have um, two other raised hands. Okay, let's go for it. Okay. Hi, Judith. You've been unmuted. Uh, uh, good morning. My name is Judith McDonough, and I live up the street uh, at 28 Mount Vernon Street. And I am opposed to the expansions at the um, roof level. I did submit a letter uh, for the November 10th hearing. Um, and my, my objection is we have the Charlestown Design Overlay District, and this neighborhood is in it. And I find it objectionable that variances have been 
creeping on uh, to extend the property. And as so, as hold on, hold on. Let me just ask you. Your objection is based on the rear addition or the decks. Both. On both. Thank you. Uh, may I have um, somebody, another person, please? Okay. Yep. I have. Um, second. Evan, Kevin Finnegan, you've been unmuted. Thank you. Uh, I live at uh, 26 Mount Vernon Street with my wife, Margaret. Uh, we've been here for 17 years. We sent a detailed letter to you why we oppose this. I hope you have it in front of you. Maybe you don't. Uh, I especially am sympathetic to Ani Azarian's problem. It seems to me this comes down to a choice between whether a developer who never intends to live at this property can maximize his profit by putting an addition and decks on that block her view and wind up with her having a diminution in the value of her property and a diminution in the use and enjoyment of her property. That's the decision that has to be made here. And it seems terribly unfair, especially in light of the, the high hurdle that 40A imposes on these variances. I mean, this building is like every other building on the street in the neighborhood. It's no different than them. Thank Why you, Mr. We... Mr. Finnegan. Thank you. May I hear from caller, uh, from a caller? Okay, sure. Yep. Uh, let's get the neighbor down. I don't see a, don't see a no call. Callers. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, so given that information, um, may I have, uh, is there a response, no. Ms. Uh, Counselor? <laughs> Yes, there is, Madam Chair. Thank you. George Brancy speaking. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wish to point out that the um, there's opposition to the third floor addition, but it is, in fact, um, dimensionally compliant. Uh, it meets all setbacks requirement. There's no height violation. Uh, the it's, third it's, floor setback sorry, gives an opportunity sorry, to... Counselor, Counselor, does it meet the side yard requirement? Hello. Yes, that that violation is eliminated. I have an updated refusal letter that was issued yesterday by Darrell Boyd, uh, which cites only uh, FAR, uh, which can be attributable to the expansion into the basement uh, and um, roof structure restrictions, which is not a variant standard. It's a conditional use permit. But the top floor unit in this case, the entire unit is currently less than 30 feet by 20 feet. It is an undersized unit by almost anyone's standards. And this is a case where a zoning compliant, dimensionally compliant uh, addition on the third floor gives the opportunity to turn that undersized unit into a 915 square foot uh, one bedroom unit. Hey, and it meets sir, all setback requirements. I think, I think you appreciate the position we're in where we have somebody who has a home office um, and and is so, will potentially suffer the consequences of um, of this addition. Of, of an addition that's dimensionally compliant. I, I don't think it, it, it would send a good message for the board to deny an addition that meets the dimensional setback requirements because there's opposition. I mean, in that case, then, then I mean, the, the, you know, the board should be limited to look at what zoning relief here is being requested. There's an FAR um, variance that we're seeking that could easily be made into a conforming use uh, with respect to eliminating space in the basement. My client would like to have some space in the basement, but that addition is essentially zoning compliant. And it's not popular, but we're not seeking relief for the addition. Okay, thank you. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Well, I'll make a motion uh, to approve with BPA design review. I, <clears throat> I'm not happy about the, the expansion, but... Um, uh, but, but, but the council, council is right, but may I ask yes. you, Mr. Ehrlich, um, how about elimination of bedrooms yes. in the basement? Yeah, yes, yes, no, there's going to be two provisos again. Um, I mean, the council is correct, unfortunately, that it's uh, zoning compliant, even if it's not an attractive option. For the, for the neighbors, so we really can't speak to that. So with BPD, so my motion would be to approve BPDA design review and no be, no bedrooms in the uh, basement. Is there a um, is there a second uh, second to this? I'll second that, Madam Chair, Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries with those provisos. Thank you. Thank you. Following the next case, calling BOA 976-349-19-21 Milk Street. This is a change of arcs for medical marijuana use in this best establishment, medical and adult recreation. The amount of material finish upgrades, violations Article 38, Section 18, the cannabis establishment, medical and adult recreation. Name and address for the record, please. Lawrence Vestacara. Uh, I'm a lawyer at 10 Post Office Square. And I'm here on behalf of Patriot Care, which is a medical dispensary pursuant to a permit issued by this board some years ago, and now thinks to locate a recreational dispensary at the same location. Okay, Councillor, can you, uh, so we remember this case quite clearly. I'd like you to, uh, um, for some officer, can you mute everybody? I don't know where the experience is coming from. Okay, Councillor, if you can please respond and describe how both uses are going to be accommodated on site. Uh, yes, and Mr. Mayerson, who is, uh, represents Patriot Care, is also on the line. Uh, they will be uh, entering the premises from separate uh, doors. They will be serviced differently, and that's how, because there's a door on the side, as well as the door on the front. And that's how we'll be able to accommodate both of them. And this has been approved by the Kansas so Council, Council, well, I'm interested in the detailed projects. Uh, current access is from Milk Street. Is Correct. that going to continue for medical? And, yes, how is and, access, and how is access for recreation going to be accommodated? It's going to be from the Holly Street uh, entrance. And will there, and will, will, is there a strategy for accommodating uh, lines or demand? Yes, there are, there are conditions imposed by the Boston Cannabis Board. Uh, the conditions are very clear. There's also a mitigation agreement with the downtown bid. It will be by appointment only and for at least the first six months. So there will be staggered uh, visitations. The uh, medical use has been there for about five years. There's never been a problem with lines whatsoever. Yes, we understand that, but we are noting that recreational does create other, other issues, other issues. And what are the hours of operation? Um, the hours of operation are uh, uh, nine o'clock, I'm going to eight o'clock at night. And when, seven days a week? Uh, seven days a week, opening much le le less on a Sunday. And this is for both uh, medical and adult? Yes. Okay. Um, how are the plans? To, uh, like um, the drawings are okay. Um, Councilor, one more question. Any uh, any questions from the board? Councilor, I don't know what the parking, Madam Chair, let me know what the parking situation is. It's a uh, it's member of Yes, go ahead, Councilor. Sure, the, uh, the traffic study uh, has been submitted uh, to the board, uh, I believe it was last Friday. It showed that 85% of the people who are customers are uh, uh, already downtown or are traveling on public transportation. Uh, this is certainly is about as transit-oriented a location as one can get, being within steps of the Blue Line, Orange Line station by the Old South Meeting House. In addition, the traffic study identifies uh, over a thousand parking spaces within walking distance, uh, the Pineville Garage being very close. Uh, so we believe that that's not an issue, has not been an issue at all uh, when we've had the medical use. What is the impact, uh, of, the, what is the impact of the expansion of the use to uh, recreational with respect to deliveries? Um, that, um, Bob, do you want to get to specifics on deliveries? 
Can we recognize Mr. Nielsen, Jessica? Sorry, what's the name, Mike? Robert Mayerson, M A Y E R S O N. I know he's on the call. Yeah, I saw I don't. Okay, yep, there you go. You've been unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the question was uh, was about delivery. So, uh, on the medical side, we we do uh, are required by the city to offer delivery. We don't we don't do any delivery out of the Mill Street location. However, we bring any deliveries are made from our other locations. Oh, uh, yeah, you decide there is Mr. Mr. Merritt, that's not my question. My question is delivery of product to the location. How is that? Uh, is the cadence? Um, increased and the method methodology with respect to delivery increased in light of the expansion to recreational. I, I apologize. I thought you were talking about outbound. So uh, the methodology is exactly the same. Um, there, there, it's possible there could be you know slightly greater frequency. I think we go currently two times a week. Uh, we and um, you know I can get into the exact de details on how we handle it, but uh, that could that could increase by another deli day or you know, another delivery or two. But it's it's handled with the same process where we are required to uh, follow certain security protocols and track the vehicle and and so on and, and call ahead you know there's a, there's a lot of protocols involved with it which i can get into if you want but um uh, we would be following everything the same way that we currently do medical because it's coming from the same facility okay and then finally um that bottom space uh, was supposed to go out to retail or art users in the basement. It's not entirely a basement. Is that is there any proposal to expand into that space for this use? Well, the should, uh, I'll answer that, Larry. Um, so the downstairs space originally, when we were uh, medical, we were we uh, sub we had a subtenant there that was a community uh, group uh, or a nonprofit that, that I should say. Uh, the intent is to uh, utilize the space that you see downstairs from the uh, from the window. There is we do currently have operations in the back of that space that we will be tying into. That I mean we already use it as a as a uh, a lounge for employees, a, a training area, and a vault room downstairs. Um, so the space that we had built out will be utilized for uh, adult use uh, downstairs. Um, to have additional adult use uh, stations downstairs if needed. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Lisa High with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abortion meeting on September 4th, 2019. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record to support. They have received support from the Downtown Boston bid as well as the Downtown Boston Residents Association. The support is based on community experience and how the proponent has conducted business in the neighborhood. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Fling's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support due to their history of engagement and being responsible in the district. They have worked with, collaboratively with Boston Police and the City of Boston. They also have their numerous community meetings with the downtown village and have their support as well. Councillor Flynn supports us. The team has always been professional and responsive to any neighborhood concerns or issues. Thank you. Madam Chair and members of the board, my name is Nat Shidley. I'm president of Revolutionary Spaces, which owns and operates the Old South Meeting House directly across the street from this location. Uh, we strongly support increasing commerce and pedestrian activity in the neighborhood, and Patriot Care has demonstrated itself to be a really great neighbor. They have a strong track record of supporting Boston nonprofits like ours, and specifically, we've partnered with them over the past year to um, to create inclusive cultural programming for residents of Boston. So, so thank you. I, yeah. uh, I I understand the quote community benefits, but I'm uh, we're looking at it from a uh, from an entirely use perspective. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have numerous letters of support. Uh, may I hear from the BPDA? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. Uh, we're on record in supporting this. Um, as 
you know, we often have these discussions. We would like this to, you know, be uh, applicable to this appellant only. Um, and everything else is pretty much state required at this point, but um, we are on the record in support. Do you need design review for any um, exterior work? No, I don't think, no, I don't think so, Madam Chair. Okay, so given this information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. With this applicant uh, you know, sure. only. To, to this applicant only? Okay, thank you. Is I'll there second. a second? Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Liquor You're all set. Madam Chair, liquor supposes. Okay, thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 109 2298 120 Salem Street. This is a great residential unit and two commercial spaces, a change of occupancy of nine residential units to one commercial space. In violation of Article 54, Section 13, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 54, Section 12, the residential use located on the first story is conditional. And Article 54, Section 21, our street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Daniel Toscano with an address at 1 State Street, Suite uh, 1500, Boston, Mass, 02109. I represent Rafi Properties, who owns the property at 120 Salem Street. It's on the property for a number of years, uh, Chair, and we're really just uh, correcting the certificate of occupancy. The existing conditions actually have eight resident. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, nine residential units in one commercial space, uh, Madam Chair. There has never been two commercial spaces at this particular location. So really just correcting uh, the certificate of occupancy as my client recently became aware, the certificate of occupancy uh, back in 2002 had eight residential units and two commercial spaces, but there has always been nine residential units and one commercial space. So counselor, no let me, counselor, let me just ask you a question. Um, which tell us which unit tell us the 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 square footage and the breakdown of each of the units um, and also tell us if taxes have been paid as nine residential and one commercial to, to answer the, the taxes yes have been always paid for nine uh, residential and one commercial space uh, the units going through unit one is actually uh, 543 square feet of space two bedroom units three five seven and nine are all identical at 615 square feet two bedroom units one bath and units two four six and eight um, uh, 643 square feet, all um, identical, two bedroom, uh, one bath, and they've been existing uh, for as long as I can remember, and I'm a lifelong resident of the neighborhood, there's never been two commercial spots at this particular location. I can go over the zoning code violations for, for you. Thank board. you. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, and there's, there's no work to be done, correct, Mr. Toscano? Correct, there is no work to be done. These have been existing. Yeah. And there's no base. Is there any basement living? There, there's no basement living. Okay. Is any any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, this is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and we'd like to go on record in support of this project. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Council at Sabi George's office. We'd like to go on record support of this project. Thank you. Madam Sorry. Chair, Secretary, here we have one letter of support. North End. Uh, okay. Madam Chair, we have no letter. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second, Lignus. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Call in the next case. Call in BOA 106-5617-230 to 238 Hanover Street. This is off street parking for residential vehicles, 15 max. Violation of Article 54, Section 21. Off street parking and loading. Uh, Article 6, Section 3A, Additional Condition and Restricted Parking District. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you again. Attorney Dan Toscano, 
when an office address of one State Street, Suite 1500, Boston, Mass, 02109. Um, I represent the owner of the property, Matteo Gallo, who is now um, asking for your support to approve this parking plan at 230, uh, 238 Hanover Street. This is an existing parking um, area. Um, it's always been used as an allowable use. Mr. Gallo owns the properties, like I said, from 230. Uh, to 238, those are residential buildings. They've always been an allowable use as an accessory to the parking. However, um, it's, it, he now rents out some of the parking to some of the residents and some of the local business owners for uh, who come in during the day. So now we have to change the use of it to to a parking lot for you know no more than 15 parking spaces, um, Madam Chair. So in regards to the violation. We do have a maneuverability violation. Um, as you can see, the tandem parking in the back. This is a seven, over a 7,000 square foot lot. There's a maneuverability issue. But I can say that the majority of the parking is done during the day. And once the park, people are there parked, that there are business owners are working in the businesses, they're there for the day. So this creates no traffic issues for the neighborhood that comes out on a hand of a street. It creates no nuisance to any of the uh, the, the owners are pedestrians, um, and so there's really no, no um, issues there. So once they're parked, they're usually there for the day, and most of the spots are, are almost empty during the night. Um, in regards to section, Article 6, Section 3A, I spoke with the City of Boston in regards to the parking. I think because this is residential parking, it doesn't qualify for um, that we would, this is an exempt from the parking freeze that is issued by the city of Boston. So we would not need any approval from the, uh, uh, was it the air pollution? Uh, so a couple, also a couple of questions. One, um, are there bedroom windows or residential units right over the spaces? And two, is not North end of a court a private way? It's well, he, Mr. Gallo owns, ha yes, he owns half of it. So the, fir the the half to the right, which is about six feet, eight inches, and the other half is owned by another property owner. So it is private. Um, so, and it will be paved. Mr. Gallo will be paving the the co existing conditions and adding some drainage pursuant to our uh, conversations with uh, the building department. Uh, also, in answer your second question, the back of the property, you see the one story, that's the a restaurant, it's a, it's a one story restaurant, so there are no windows. It's just a second means of egress. So we added uh, a three foot walkway, as you can see, which will be put there with some bollards, so no cars can park there. And in the back, with all those tandem parking, it's there's no windows, it's just brick walls, cement walls. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, a couple of questions. The um, uh, uh, the chair asked about North Hanover Court. Is there an easement for uh, for use of the, uh, uh, the, the as a driveway? It, there is, and there is an easement. It's second means of egress for one of the restaurants that's on Salem Street, where, which we will not be. You'll see it. There's a sign that says concrete uh, block wall. Right after that, there's a a doorway for second means of egress. We will not be blocking that. It's it's not even on, it's not on our property, but. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm asking about an easement with a neighbor so that the home driveway can be used. Is that recorded? Um, I believe there is, um, um, Mr. Ehrlich. I believe there is a, a prior attorney did address this issue uh, with, with, I think, Neil Janowitz, um, uh, but I haven't, but I believe there is an easement. Well, uh, please, uh, please find out. That's one question. The other is, uh, on the tandem parking, um, is there an attendant there? How do the, you've got nine so, cars, uh, uh, the three are potentially blocking. How, how do they maneuver in and out? Right, so there's, there's no attendant. So, so this is why this is an exempt from the commercial parking space because it's not uh, for public parking that people could come in and out. Um, these are monthly parking uh, spaces. Usually they're, um, the majority of the spaces that are rented in the back there uh, people that work at the local businesses and once they're in there during the day they're pretty much in there and they really regulate themselves um if, if they if someone needs to really get in and out if there's someone being blocked so if someone so if someone's parked for the day in the in the in the back they have to go find the person who the other two cars in the front to move yes yes so they're, they're pretty familiar this has been been operating like that for quite some time they're pretty familiar who who 
Fox Dam, and it's usually done a number of the spaces. Like I said, they're all by local businesses right in the area. Thank you. Um, is anybody, any questions Madam, from the board? Yes, yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary here, speaking on behalf of Bob D'Amico from BTD. He, he believes that 230, 238 Hanover Street should only be approved for nine spaces. Um, Harvard Court is only 13 feet in width, making maneuverability extremely difficult, if not impossible. And also, all the spaces are too small and do not meet BTD. Okay, thank you. Is anybody here to speak in support? Madam Chair, members of the board, this is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and we'd like to uh, go on record and support the project. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on record and support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, here we have a handful of uh, letters of support. Madam Chair, we have no raise hands. Thank you. So given this information from Bob uh, D'Amico, um, and, you know, to understand that this is to relieve on-street parking pressure for, for business owners, uh, may I have a motion, please? I'm sure I'm going to make a motion to approve at the vote. Is there a second? Oh, those second. In, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling BOA 110 7090 311 to 319 Summer Street. This is, this is a med spa clinic, as occupancy and use in this space. The violation of Article 8, Section 7, use is conditional. Med Spy Clinic is a conditional use in the zoning subdistrict. May we address for the record, please? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Johanna Schneider with the business address of 75 State Street in Boston. I'm here with Gabriella Veradakis from Sweet Six Medical Aesthetics. We are seeking a conditional use permit to operate a medical aesthetic spa at 311 Summer Street. This med spa is licensed by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. It employs licensed medical doctors, nurse practitioners, and registered nurses, and it follows a rigorous health and safety protocol. We will be providing medical aesthetics treatment, such as Botox, laser hair removal, and dermal fillers, as well as aesthetic services, such as facials, eyelash extensions, and face and body waxing. It will also have an on-site skincare retail boutique. So, um, so, hold on. So, please tell us how many booths, how many, um, and the hours of operation, please. Sure. The premises overall is 2,500 square feet. There will be five private treatment rooms. We anticipate having approximately 20 patients per day. There will be approximately 13 employees in the space. The hours of operation will be Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, um, and is this ground floor use? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, okay, and uh, what was the previous use in this space? I believe it was uh, some sort of office or retail use. Uh, it's the ground floor of an office building that is currently occupied by a large architecture firm, and it's been vacant for some time, so this is a good way to revitalize the space. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Alec? Uh, the drawings are straightforward. I guess my only question is um, to the applicant, are you assuming that uh, are you making provisions for the COVID area or, or era, or are you assuming that uh, this will go into operation once uh, things are improved? Um, if Gabriella Veridakis could be unmuted, she could answer that. I can also answer that they already do have a strict COVID protocol in place, including um, temperature testing all clients upon arrival, uh, using adequate PPE, and using um, decals on the floor to indicate distances and plexiglass in between um, different public spaces. Hi, Gabriella, you've been that's, unmuted. Yes, that's correct. We are uh, taking all precautions and using all uh, PPE equipment. All my staff has um, been educated and trained and uh, proper 
protection through this COVID pandemic. And is and this your, hand sorry, is this your only facility? No, I have one in Newburyport and we are following very strict regulations, uh, state regulations and codes for uh, the COVID-19. Gabriella, can you hold on please? Uh, any other questions from the board? Joe, did you have a question? No. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Airport Services. I'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support as Councillor Flynn met with the proponent and believes that this will be a welcome and responsible business addition to the community. It is also Councillor Flynn's view that it is critical to do all we can to support women and minority-owned business who has been heavily impacted to the economic fallout caused by COVID-19. In addition, the proponent has the support of the neighbors from the Four Point Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, here we have just a couple of letters of support. Thank you. I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make a motion. So, oh, oh, Ms. Ambassador, or anybody else? Jessica, you're muted. Uh, good Sorry. morning, Madam Chair, members of the board of minor parades with the carpenters. You don't want to go on record on support. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, Madam Chair, I have one caller whose hand has been raised, but I'm not sure. I've just unmuted you, caller uh, 307. Yep, okay. No, they put their hand down. Sorry, thank you. May I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to approve. Does BPDA need to review for signage or anything? Uh, I mean, it's... One of those things, well, IAC will kick the signage to us anyway. If you want to make it part of the record, you can. Yeah, motion to approve a BPDA design review for signage. And Second, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Calling the last case for 930, calling VOA 1118789, 14 to 16 West Broadway. This is a build out of an existing shell space for a new bank. The violation of Article 68, Section 7, bank use is a conditional use in the zoning subdistrict, and Article 68, Section 33, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, members, this is an application uh, to uh, convert existing shell space in the building at 14 West Broadway, uh, ground floor space, into uh, a bank use. Uh, my client is Harbor One Bank. Uh, joining us in this meeting is David Tidwell, who's Vice President of Corporate Services for Harbor One. Uh, the branch would be approximately 1,540 square feet. Uh, it's located in an MFRLS, multifamily residential local service subdistrict on West Broadway in South Boston, which is somewhat curiously uh, a location that requires uh, zoning relief, uh, in this case, in the form of a conditional use permit for a bank. Uh, there are, you know, anyone who's familiar with West Broadway, it is a uh, main commercial thoroughfare of South Boston. There are many banks uh, on both West Broadway and East Broadway. The relief being sought is the conditional use permit uh, and uh, relief for the uh, complete inability to provide parking for the use. Thank you. How, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Plans are okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? I'm Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go market and support. Thank you. Hi, Madam the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councilor Fearing's Office. <coughs> The councilor would like to go on record in support due to feedback from the West Broadway Neighborhood Association who reported no issues. At the, at the same time, Councillor Flynn would also like the board to ensure that there are no outstanding issues in terms of pedestrian safety, accessibility for persons with disabilities, and ADA compliance and access, as there have been challenges in the past at this time. 
that the city has had to work with the developer to correct. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Council Wasabi George's office, would like to go on record in support and uh, echo the sentiments of Councilor Flynn. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to approve with design review for signage. Second, regressive. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Opposed? Motion carries. It is now uh, 1055. Our next set of cases is at 1230. The board is now adjourned until then. In the meantime, any applicants requesting uh, deferral or withdrawal, please let um, Miss Ambassador know about your request. So we will reconvene 1230 on the dot. Thank you. June, the Board of Appe Appeal for uh, December 8th is back in session. Uh, Mr. Fort, uh, just let me take a roll call. Is Mr. Fortune here? I'm here, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich? I'm here. Frio? Did you say me? You cut off. Yes, I, uh, uh, just, just, uh, just, just checking in. Uh, yep. Mr. Ligris? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Kendall. Mr. DeVoe. Present. Thank you. Um, Jeff, are you on? Just Mr. Hampton? Yes, Madam Chair, I'm here. And Mr. Mr. Kendall, when you're on, is just one more check. Are you on? Uh, Ms. Ambassador, please let me know when um, Mr. Kendall is back on, because I know sometimes he has problems with audio. Okay. 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 Let's uh, let's go ahead, Mr. Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to call the 1230s. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals? Could you please give me the address for us? 69 Reville Street. For the record. Coming DOA 112 719 69 Reedville Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. This is just a point of the We're here today seeking a deferral on this matter. Is there a reason, Mr. Mr. Small? Yes. <laughs> Okay. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The date, please? We have a date of March 23rd at 1230. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day. See you in the new year. Yes. Happy holidays to everyone. Two. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? 32 Brent Street. Sorry, say that address again, 32 Brent? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. For the record, calling VOA 1054245, 32 Brent Street. Name and address for the record, please. Attorney Patrick Mahoney with the business address of 160 Federal Street. Are you requesting a deferral, Mr. Mahoney? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. We're seeking a deferral. Uh, after the community process concluded, we did receive an additional request. We are going to comply with and then have another meeting. May I have a motion, please? Motion affirmed. Is there a second? Second, okay, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please? We have a date of March 23rd uh, at 1230. Thank you. See you, Councillor, in the new year. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? Address, please. Yes, 16 and 21 Tanglewood Road companion cases. 
Will the record calling BOA 107-2612-16 Tangle Wood Road. There are two companion cases, BOA 107-2609-16 Tangle Wood Road and BOA 107-2607-21 Tangle Wood Road. Name and address for the record, please. Alec Benelli with the business address of 10 Forbes Road, Braintree, Massachusetts. Pause. Tell us why you're requesting a deferral, Alex. Good morning, Matt, or good afternoon, rather, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, we began uh, the community process uh, reaching out to the Lower Mill Civic Association back in August. Uh, we were in front of the e board um, and then had two follow up abutters meetings, briefed the e board on uh, the results of those abutters meetings and the outreach to the community. They asked us to defer. Uh, to go in front of their membership, they're reconvening uh, again in January. So they just asked us for a deferral to update the association. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date. I'm sorry, March 23rd at 12.30. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? Address, please. The case, uh, case, and I'm going to call it in for the record here. Um, and I'll explain the next one after. But for the record, case BOA 9448543636 million circle. Uh, we have a letter of withdrawal, so I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hi, talk. Hello. Christine, can you hear me? Who is this? Harry Martel. Hey, Harry. Um, listen, um, Neely and Co. Court, is that being withdrawn? Yeah, but Madam Chair, oh. that what I want to explain is another case that for 36 million circle that it's going to be heard. Okay, and please, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fortune, can you put that number in the record, the BOA number? I just did, Madam Chair. And so it's the one that we will hear is 11 13 797, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. okay. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? What, 1230? What's your BOA number? Okay, we have a long agenda, so let's get cracking. On the first case, calling BOA 1096726 Wyman Street. This is a renovation of an attic to accommodate an office and family room. The violation of Article 55, Section 9, the floor air ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. <sighs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please put your name and address on the record and tell us what's being proposed. Okay, my name is Yael Getschon. Uh, I'm the architect for the project. Uh, my address is 70 Hoyt Road in Belmont, MA, 02478. Uh, my clients own this condo, which is part of a three condo um, association, and they have an existing attic, uh, which is unfinished, and they're trying to finish the attic into a playroom and an office without changing the the mass of the house or you know the volume in any way and so hold on tell me tell us how many square feet it is the addition the, the finished it's the expansion yes it's uh 374 gross square feet and, and this is a single family no it's a condo uh um so, out of so three condoms Okay, so this is 375. And what's the floor to ceiling height? Uh, floor to ceiling height. In the attic, you mean? I need to check. Yes, yes, in the attic where they're proposing the expansion. Yeah, hang on one second, I'll tell you. Um, Ms. Olick, in the meantime, how are the plans? Um, the plans are okay, um, but it's uh, pretty tight in terms of headroom. It's really um, only seven feet, like okay. said, for a single family house. Okay. okay. 
sorry. Okay. The height so, under the ridge is eight feet and ten inches, but yeah, then it slopes no, no, down. But, no, 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 but usable space. You, you've got living space with a, with a height of seven feet. Yeah, but I keep the slope uh, exposed. So I have a ridge in the middle and then it slopes down. So if you look at the sections for a second, can you can you can you roll down to the sections? That's what I'm looking at, and, and it says seven feet height line. I'm looking at uh, that's exactly what I'm looking at. So um, okay, so uh, so we just have to register that as an issue. However, this is uh, partially used space. Is that what it is? Just an office and a family room. Yes. Okay. Right now, it's just storage. Okay. Uh, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Office of Neighborhood Services. The abutters meeting was held on September 3rd, 2020, where the applicant addressed the abutters' questions and concerns. The applicant also received the support of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council, so the Mayor's Office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Sorry. Um, good afternoon. And uh, Chairwoman and members of the board, Karen Foley, Council Assad B. George's office, like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, Jessica, uh, Justin McCleary from um, Mountain Miley's office is muted. He'd like to speak. Yes, please put your name and address on the record and tell us what you're, if you're in support or not. Hi, thank you, Lindsay. Mr. McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. Uh, the council would also like to go on record and support. Thank you. Jessica, any other hands? No, ma'am. No, may I have a motion, please? Um, I'm going to make a motion for approval, but I want the proviso of no building code relief just in terms of the issue of height. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling BOA 104 9554 304 Center Street. This is the rule provisal of the previous owner and change to the new owner's name. Violations Article 6, Section 4, change to the previous decision, the Board of Appeal. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I just want to let you know it does appear that Mr. Kindell is now on the call. Thank you. I don't know if you want to test his audio to make sure that he can be heard. Mr. Kendall, can you just give us a shout out? Can you guys hear me? I second yes. a few, but I got, I got okay. beat to the punch. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, is it, is, do, I, do I need to hear from the applicant's name and address for Center Street? Yes. <laughs> Is anybody here for 3 or 4 Center Street? I'll hold that one off, Madam Chair. We'll go to the next case. Yep. Calling DOA 1041086, 24 Spalding Street. This is a erected building for a three family residence, one unit for affordable housing unit, one unit for owner occupied accessible unit, and one three bedroom unit. The violations Article 8, Section 7, three family residential dwelling units forbidden use in the OSRC subdistrict. Article 55, Section 40, R Street parking is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, rear yard setback is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the height requirement is excessive, three story max, three and a half is proposed. Article 55, Section 9, the lot area for additional dwelling units insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the front yard setback is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, the height requirement is excessive in feet. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Mel Beckel with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon. Uh, with me this afternoon is David and Tracy Steves, the owner, the owners of 24 Spalding Street. David is also the project architect. Uh, as mentioned, the proposal is to erect a three-family building with two parking spaces. 
Uh, a very brief background, this lot was sold to the Steves by the Mass Department of Transportation uh, approximately two years ago. And during that purchase process, since MassDOT was sponsoring the project, the Steves and MassDOT agreed to certain use restrictions, as was mentioned. One with the first floor would be a fully accessible unit, and it's also going to be owner-occupied. And the second restriction is that one of the units would be at 80% PMI, uh, with the third unit being a market rate. So those are all recorded in the deed. It is a uh, deed restriction. Uh, the zoning subdistrict is technically open space recreational. This is based on the fact that it was formerly owned by MassDOT, uh, clearly by the, uh, the deed and the discussion between MassDOT and the applicants. Uh, this is the kind of development that was proposed and uh, contemplated when selling the property to a, to a private uh, citizen. The lot size is 5,000 square feet. Uh, just to go through the violation very briefly, as I mentioned, the use technically we are still in an open space zoning district. Uh, but we abut directly a 3F5000 subdistrict, and all the other properties on the street are three family dwellings. Uh, additional lot area per dwelling unit, we need 2,000 per extra unit. We have 2,000 total. The floor air ratio allows 0.6. We're at 1.1, which is right around or, or below kind of the street average. Uh, Matt, can you tell us what the abutting zoning district is? Sure. It is. A, it's a 3F. 5,000 directly to the left and across the street. So it's a 3 of 5,000. It looks like it's triple deckers for the most part. Is that true? That's correct, yes. We're carrying okay. the roof line uh, of I, the other and then, and then I think, um, you know, we understand the rest of it. Tell us about this is new construction. Tell us about the, the off-street parking. Sure. So yeah, it's, it's new construction on a vacant lot. There are two proposed parking spaces. They are tandem. Uh, one of the spaces will accommodate a uh, handicap accessibility. So as we, um, we can't see, you can see it kind of on the bottom right here, the building juts out a little bit in the rear. So in the front, we have about a 14 foot clearance or so, so we can accommodate a handicap uh, vehicle with a ramp. And then it does narrow a little bit to about 12 feet in the rear. So there'd be two parking spaces. One would be located on the first floor predominantly with an interior staircase to two bedrooms on the second floor. So the first floor itself would have a full ramp access and uh, living quarters, uh, including bedroom, uh, one bedroom, uh, room, a living room and a kitchen, and then the second floor, which is had two bedrooms. Uh, the second floor, which is supposed to be the affordable unit at 80% AMI, would have two bedrooms and one bath, as well as a rear porch. And unit three, which is proposed to be market rate, would be a three bedroom, two bath, also with a porch. So with that, I'll pause and take any further questions from the board. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, your honors are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Office of Neighborhood Services. The butters meeting was held on February 13th, 2020. The applicant worked closely with um, neighbors to address concerns, and they have received the support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council. So, the mayor's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Justin McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would also like to go on record and support. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Councilor Sabi George's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We have a handful of letters from support and some opposition. And Madam Chair, I have one raised hand. Thank you. What's the opposition based on, um, Mr. Secretary? Some are just opposed to the project. Some are opposed to the construction of the house on the slot. Okay. Okay. Ms. Testa, can you please put your name and address on the record and tell us if you're in support or in opposition? Sure, my name is Jeannie Testa and I live at 16 Rosemary. I'm a neighbor of the Steves family and I support them 100% um, in their intention to build a house. I think um, it's a great idea, especially they'll have um, a handicapped um, entrance to the house, which is perfect for their son who, um, who uses a wheelchair. So I'm, I'm in. Thank you. 100%. Thank you. Can I hear from Ms. Paris or oh, Mr. Paris? Mr. 
Yes, please put your name and address on the record. Hi, this is Curtis Perrin, uh, 19 Kenilworth Street in Roxbury. Yes, uh, and are you speaking on Spalding Street? No. Um, okay, would... then, then hold off. Can I hear from Ms. 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 Pang, please, Jessica, Ms. Ambassador? Yes, one second. So they ask. Okay. Yep. You've been unmuted? Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hi. Name and address on the record. So I'm Stephen Paris. Uh, I live on 39 Rosemary Street. I'm an abutter to the project. And uh, while we have nothing against the project of building a house, we are in opposition in the project in its current form. Uh, in particular, the house does not respect any of the setbacks and several other things. We have documented in our letter that affordable, you know, uh, accessible units could be built slightly smaller and respect the setbacks. In particular, the setback along the property line with our uh, property. Okay. Move three feet to adjust, and we believe it's a small adjustment that can be done. If this were done, we were supportive of building a house. Thank you. May I hear from uh, uh, Mr. and Ms. Pang, please? Mm -hmm. yes, so, sorry, uh, Ms. Pang is my wife, and she has the same concern. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion, please? No approve it, BPDA design review. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Lager. Uh, it, it, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 113 160 124 126 Warren Street. This is a building, a new four-story building of wood, steel, concrete, on the vacant lots at 124, 126 Warren Street. Combine two lots into one lot to be 5,188 square feet to be known as 124, 126 Warren Street. The violation of Article 50, Section 43, OSP parking is insufficient. Article 50, Section 28, office use is conditional. Article 50, Section 29, the floor air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, side yard is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Attorney Patrick Mahoney with the business address of 160 Federal Street. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, sorry, I'd like to recuse myself on this. And who's this? Joe. Joe, um, so Ruggiero is rec recusing himself. Okay, go ahead. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, the applicant seeking to uh, erect a four-story office building on the site. Uh, by way of background, this is a vacant lot, or rather the two lots are vacant lots uh, after a seven alarm fire that occurred in 2014, prior to which time from 1997 to 2014, it was veterans benefit Clearinghouse, which was a commercial use, and then prior to that, from 1969 to 1997, it was the office of Roxbury Defenders. Um, so as it sits as a vacant lot in the last six and a half years, my client is proposing to erect a four-story building with parking on the first level. Uh, as, the, as the secretary had mentioned, we are seeking relief for parking because it is just over 10,000 square feet of office space, 10 spaces would be required. However, we have provided eight spaces. Um, it's, it's worth noting the previous uses had no parking for the office space. The height violation, as in vertical distance above grade, has been eliminated. It is 45 feet is the allowed height for this use or for rather for any other use which would qualify as office. So, uh, Council, this is still four stories, right? Yep, four, four stories is allowed, Madam Chair, and the height is 45 feet. That's okay. okay. So, we are, we are therefore seeking relief for floor area ratio. The zoning subdistrict is multifamily residential and local services, which has a floor area ratio of one. We are seeking to increase that to 2.2. Uh, additionally, we are seeking relief from side yard. 
Sorry, I did not hear. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what the request was for side yard. The, the, the requirement for side yard is 10 feet, and we are seeking relief for five feet of that. And the rear yard requirement is 15 feet with the shallow lot exception. Without it, it is 20 feet. And we are seeking relief of that with this proposed side yard of five feet, as shown in this drawing above. This is this is a our site survey, which is a good drawing to show the setbacks. Okay, right then uh, tell us about the parking. The parking is accessed on Winthrop Street, and it is by the center of the building. The building fronts on Warner, Warren Street, the corner of Winthrop. Parking will ingress and egress um, on Winthrop Street, and there is eight parking spaces, five full spaces, and three compact, or excuse me, four compact spaces, and four full spaces, as shown below, which are seven feet by 18 feet for the compact spaces, and eight and a half feet by 20 feet for the full size spaces. Which okay. is- Okay. And um, so this is office, how many square feet of this is office? It's approximately 10,500 square feet. We have a small office area on the first floor to activate Warren Street, so it isn't just a parking garage. And then on the floors two, three, and four, it is entirely office in each, each floor, including the elevator and stairs is approximately 3,557 square feet. Okay, may I see, um, uh, Colette, may I see a rendering of what this looks like? In the meantime, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, the drawings are, are uh, uh, Mr. Mahoney, um, you've got a lot of stuff going on in the roof. You got the elevator head house, the mechanical room head house, and the stairs head house. Um, is, is there some way that uh, some of that could be combined to uh, reduce the, the roof line? Uh, yes, Mr. Ehrlich, we, we could eliminate the, the stair head house to hatch because it is four feet and there's no accessible. Uh, rather, there's no livable space out there. There's no deck, as to say. Everything there is for mechanical okay, purposes. That would be an improvement. Other than that, the drawings are fine. Okay. Um, one question. So you're providing uh, eight parking spaces, eight full, a full, full, full compact. What's required by zoning? Ten, which would be five full and five compact. Required equals ten, and you're providing eight. Okay. Um, okay, any questions from the board? Um, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Coppinger from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Two board meetings were held on uh, 813 and 922. Um, concerns from residents regarding density and design were heard. Uh, we would like to go on record in support with strong BPD, BPDA design review. Uh, we would also like to note that we earned support from Roxbury Main Streets as well as the Boys and Girls Club of Roxbury. Thank you. Thank you. Any raised hands? Madam Chair, Secretary here. We have numerous letters of non-support for this project and in regards to the historic value of the buildings or Unfortunately, uh, I don't have any other than that. Okay, I have a few hands raised. A woman hands raised, a few callers have yes. called in. Madam Chair, this is uh, members of the board, Samuel Tal from uh, the Office of President and Kim Jenny. Um, so we have asked the, the proponents to defer, to allow for more time to resolve some of the issues, multiple issues raised by, by, the, by the community. Uh, we have received mostly letters of uh, not, not support. Uh, we understand there are many good aspects about this project, uh, but there are so many concerns about the proximity it has to a, a historical house, a home, Warren Street home, and uh, uh, the, the wall, the, the putting a stone wall, and we understand there is a commitment from from the proponent to save as much as they can, but they have to comply with ADA. Uh, so ideally, we will have more time to to resolve these issues. But as it is now, President Jenny would like to in in opposition of, of this project. Thank you. Thank you, um, Sam. Just for the record, the proponent obviously has decided to go ahead. 
So I assume that it's your, you are then in opposition of the project. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, may I hear from um, Lorraine Wheeler, please? Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, Lorraine, you've been unmuted. Hi. Um, so I'm Lorraine Wheeler. I'm here representing Roxbury Forward Neighborhood Association. And, um, you know, if I, if I could have a, a, a book that says ambivalent, that's what I would say. And it's because um, we have heard from a number of abutters on Warren Street who um, would like changes in the design. But at the same time, the design, um, because it, the front of it is actually uh, towards Warren Street, and because they're row houses, um, a lot of those houses don't have any view of uh, the Warren Street. Uh, um, so then we really changed our, um, our interest toward um, the um, historic Warren House, which is a pending landmark, and the neighborhood has supported that. And so um, we've heard from uh, the owners of the Warren House who are on the call today, and I hope uh, we can hear from them. Just because of the way this building um, um, may not be as sensitive to the Warren House and doesn't um, have the setbacks, but at the same time, so I don't want to take too much time, but I do want to say that there is support of this building from the business community that um, office space um, is needed in Roxbury. This is modern space. Um, I've talked to the owner uh, enough to know that um, he um, is open to continuing to talk to the neighbors. So our, our biggest issue at this time is um, if we could have the Landmarks um, Commission uh, give um, some of their experience with, um, you know, fitting a modern building into an old neighborhood and uh, making just making adjustments to it that doesn't um, result in too modern a building on that corner. So thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, may I hear from Ricky Thompson? Please give us new information after you put your name and address on the record. My name is Ricky Thompson. I'm a um, board member of the Caribbean Foundation of Boston. And uh, we supply health aids to Boston seniors. We provide employment. Sir, tell us, are you in support or in opposition we, we of are, this project? We are in support. Oh, uh, OK. Uh, Sophia, may I hear from you, please? OK, okay Sophia, you're all set. Hi, thank you. I am in opposition of this project. My name is Sophia Transtamar. Sophia, please give us new information. Thank you. I reside at 19 Winthrop Street. Um, the office space that is being provided along with the four-story height um, is too much for this particular area. From 130 Warren Street all the way down to 88 Warren Street, there are 10 parcels of which seven of them are below three feet in height. The previous building that was on this land had the substantial front side um, yardage on the property and it was only three feet in height. Um, the fact or the argument that commercial space, modern commercial space is needed in the Nubian Square District. I do not agree with that because there's a substantial um, amount of modern and refurbished commercial space in Nubian Square, which is feet away from this location that has consistently been vacant pre-COVID. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, yes, I yeah, but I also have Robert George from Roxbury Main Streets. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Robert. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. The Walks Bay Main Street Design Committee met with the developers and believed that this, that this project fits within the Walks Bay Strategic Master Plan and can facilitate um, more growth in the business district. We see this project bringing a lot of foot traffic into the square to enhance the business who are desperately looking for new audiences and new, and new customers. So we support this project because it fits within the Walks Bay Master Plan and the Strategic Plan. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I have a question for the developer, this, uh, the developer's representative. This is an MFRLS. 
So basically the ground floor use is supposed to be a local service and the upper floor residential. You're proposing the entire building to be commercial. Yes. Um, and um, the thing about um, Nubian Square is that the city has issued a whole number of RFPs. Developers have been designated. They've come to this board and have received approval for the construction of Class A office space. Um, so, and, and this is a little bit outside of Nubian Square. Um, the Nubian Square market analysis talks about the need to limit um, the additional office space and commercial space that's outside of the square. Um, and so, um, can you give us a response to that? Certainly, Madam Chair. So, Madam Chair, just a, is by way of background, this was office space from 1969 no, I, I honestly to remember. I remember this building. I remember visiting VB, uh, Veterans Benefit Clearinghouse, VBC, all those years ago. Certainly. So I'm completely aware of the building. However, it's burnt down. It's gone. It hasn't been reconstructed in the two-year time frame. So essentially, the, the, the zoning, the MFR LS prevails. So tell it's, us no, about this. No, Madam Chair, I'm not refuting that, and I understand that position. However, my client proposed office space. He bought this land from a previous developer who failed at proposing res multifamily residential. So as the board mentions, the zoning does um, allow for residential. The previous, a previous developer, not our client here, tried to go through that process for a year and they could not do any type of development that the community was was it? What, yeah, because I kind of remember that there were issues with the density. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, so I, you know, for me personally, I think that um, this, this, um, you know, because you just you haven't, um, I guess, responded to my question why so much office space is necessary uh, yes. when there is there is a good amount of vacancy already. Well, they have a client uh, with a letter of intent who wrote a letter of support who is seeking this space, who's already in the area and seeking to move to new space. So I, although I think there may be some office space available, uh, my client who already purchased the property is seeking to build a, a, new, a new building and house his prospective client and who's currently in the area in a, in a neighboring property and they're, they're a nonprofit and they'll be taking one floor of space. Uh, which will leave one floor of the space for his own use. So, I mean, I, Madam Chair, my client owns the land. It was office space before. We are seeking relief for that. But he, he's intending to use it for himself as well as um, one of the supporters who is seeking to take a floor of the space. He, he's already purchased the land. It res res okay, so, um, so, I think um, it's clear to the board that the zoning here is multifamily residential with a minimal amount of ground floor retail space. There is a study which I have to say um, I have no vested interest in, but I do have a vested interest in that uh, talks the need of uh, limiting commercial space to Nubian Square so the vacancies on commercial and office space are decreased. There is also class eight space coming along uh, with the three uh, RFPs that have been approved by the city and have been, uh, two of the three have been approved by this board. Um, so I just leave it out there. So may I have a motion please? Uh, may I speak in opposition? Uh, who is this? Uh, my name is Alex Pierpont, and I'm one of the owners of 130 Warren Street, which is the... the yes, please, please be fast. I, I don't... Okay. Uh, I, we are in strong opposition to this project, uh, mostly about its size. Uh, our building is a historic site and also a lovely pudding stone building and would be totally cut off from the square and from the street by this building, which is just too big. Thank you. Okay, so we're just cutting off comment. 
Uh, please, Jessica, make sure that everyone is muted. Miss Ambassador, make sure everybody is muted. Uh, yeah, may, I I, speak. may I have an, a motion from the board, please? Um, I'll make a motion to uh, for approval with uh, BPDA design review to reflect the uh, context and also to replace the stair head house with a hatch. Is there a second? Could I make a comment, please? Who is this? Is there is there a second from a board member? I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chris opposes. I too am in support. Uh, I too am in, in opposition because this uh, goes against everything uh, that has been detailed in what is necessary for the growth and expansion of Nubian Square. Um, so, um, but the motion, however, because there's five people in support, does Sir, Madam Chair, Mr. Ruggiero is recused, so there's only six members hearing this appeal. Okay, so uh, the, mo the motion is denied. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you. So uh, the motion is denied. Uh, the project is denied. Thank you. I'm calling the next case. Oh, Madam, it's um, it's one ten. I'm going to call the one o'clock cases for deferrals or withdrawals. Could you please give me your address first, please? This is one o'clock deferrals or withdrawals. Fifty nine A Strathmore, Mr. Secretary Road. Okay. For the record, hold on two seconds. Let me get to them. For the record, calling VOA 101-4112-59A Strathmore Road. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscano with address of 11 Beacon Street. Um, we are seeking a, a deferral today. We had deferred uh, at a prior hearing and worked with our rear butters and neighbors. We have made some headway. Um, sir, let me just ask you, which deferral is this? Is it a request for a second deferral? Yes, Madam Chair, this is our second deferral request. Okay, um, please make sure that this is your last, okay? Yes, it will okay. be. May if I we... have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Is there a second? Second, Ed DeVoe. All those in favor? All right. Any opposed? The date, please. Madam Chair, for the record, Ligris recusing himself on this vote for deferral. Okay. Uh, who is this? Uh, I mean, so what Ligris. date is this? Uh, what is the date, please? Uh, March 23rd at 1230. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, Madam Chair, we also have 304 Center on. I don't know if you want to go back to that or... No, no let's we're at one o'clock right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Any other deferrals or withdrawals for one o'clock, please? Mr. Secretary, 1443 Hyde Park Avenue. For the record. Sorry. 0 8 9 3 7 9 2 1 uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lenz, I'm actually uh, standing in for Attorney George Morancy requesting a deferral of this matter. I believe there are plans that are being updated that need to be reviewed by ISD uh, based on changes that were made. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer, Madam Chair. Is there a second? Second, second. second. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please? March 23rd at 1230. 3137 Beach Street, Mr. Secretary. Sure. For the record, calling BOA 1028114, 31 to 37 Beach Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lenz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of Media Vision Incorporated, we're requesting withdrawal. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, this is the uh, billboard sign. They've had numerous um, deferrals, so they're they're withdrawing, but should we make a motion for denial or denial without prejudice? Uh, we just have to stand by a general procedure and go ahead with denial without prejudice. All right, so I'll make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 
Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for one o'clock? Address, please. Is Parent Street on? I believe they were. Well, we can we can come back to if they are. If there are no more deferrals or withdrawals, I'll go back to the next case for twelve thirty. Calling DOA one zero seven nine three six four six Oak Oakhurst Street. This is relief for a new three family residential building. The violation of Article 60, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 60, Section 40, parking maneuverability. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient lot size. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient additional lot area per unit. Article 60, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient open space. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback. And Article 60, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. David Atkins, for the record, please. David Atkins, for the record, please. here for Oakhurst Street. Yes, let me, can you, uh, yeah. Please put your name and address and let's move. Okay, Kim, you're gonna move in. Uh, hi, this is Cam Raufi. I'm here uh, to uh, discuss my case at 6 Oakhurst Street. So tell us what you're proposing to do. Uh, so the project is uh, uh, to construct a three family, three unit uh, residential building on 6 Oakhurst Street. A couple of things I'd like to point out uh, for this site is that there are four or five vacant properties, uh, vacant land on the left side of the uh, lot and there are a few more across the street on Oakhurst Street. And uh, there has been recently a whole lot of uh, Similar approval for three family units across uh, this street, directly across from this side for three family development. And we are okay, so hold on. Um, can, is there a roof deck proposed on this? Yes, there is a roof deck accessible through a hatch. Okay, roof deck through hatch. Tell us how the parking is going to work. Sure, we are providing three parking uh, for this project, one for each unit. And uh, uh, there will be on site, and uh, the, uh, yes, uh, and there, uh, all the Drake borders are fully supportive of the project. The okay, first floor is okay hold on, hold on. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? Uh, technically, the plans are fine. Uh, it's a surprisingly modern looking uh, building in the midst of a very traditional looking neighborhood. Yeah, we can get to that. Uh, any questions from the board? Mr. Yes. Early, that third parking space appears compact. What is it? Is that train radius for the two full size spots adequate? Uh, hold on. Trying to pull it up. Yeah. Um, Madam Chairwoman, I also have my architect, Mr. Phil Sima, online, and he could uh, answer any technical questions you guys. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a ten yard, uh, ten ten feet wide driveway, which is standard, and um, it, it, you know it's very tight, uh, but it could be it could be done. Mr. Sima, can you address the turning radius for the parking spot closest to the building with respect to a, a, a compact spot being used uh, alongside the building? Uh, yes, hi, this is Philip Sima from Balance Architects. Um, we believe that you would be able to pull in, pull forward, and then uh, back up into that compact spot. Um, and, you know, we have a ratio of two full spots to one compact spot 
Uh, we don't foresee this as an issue, but we do agree that the parking is tight, which is typical of many of the projects we work on in Boston. Okay, um, any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, Whitney Celestin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I did hold an abutters meeting for this project on October 21st. After they met with the Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association on October 15th, we would like to go on record in support. We also advise strong um, DPDA design review just because of the parking concerns and also the character being uh, given the neighborhood that it's in with, the, um, with such a new design. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dustin, Dustin go ahead. Not one second. Let me make them. Okay, you've been, Dustin, you're all set. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dustin Gardner, behalf of City Councilor Andrea Campbell's office, who would also like to go on record in support of this. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, Secretary, we have numerous letters of support. I'd like to make a motion to approve with a heavy, heavy BPDA design review on both the design of the building and take a look at the parking. Stuff. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Calling the next two cases, calling BOA 110-6336, 5 Tovar Street, the companion case, BOA 110-6343, 9 Tovar Street. This is for 5 Tovar. This is a renovated and converted three to a four-family residential. The violations, Article 65, Section 8, a four-family use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the maximum allowed floor to air ratio is excessive. Article, 50, Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9.2, dimensional regulations, the location of the main entrance. Article 66, Section 42, off street parking and loading. This is for nine Tovar, directly three family residential building. Violation of Article 65, Section 41, off street parking and loading. Article 65, Section 9, lot area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, lot width is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, rear yard is insufficient. And Article 66, Section 42, off street parking and loading. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Scott Kirkwood, uh, representing Breck Properties. The owner address is 1904 Washington Street, Roxbury. So tell us what's being proposed. So uh, we have uh, the rehab of an existing building at 5 Tovar Street, and that building was vacated by fire in September of 2019. Um, we're proposing splitting the first floor and basement uh, down the middle to essentially create two side-by-side -side duplex units. Uh, it's going to be four units in total um, with one parking space provided for the additional unit that is being added. Um, the lot previously had uh, no parking. Um, and then at 9 Tovar, which is currently uh, a vacant lot, we're proposing to construct a new uh, three-family building that is smaller than the existing building at 9 Tovar and a lot of the surrounding buildings with uh, two out of the three parking spaces required provided on site. So a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, on five, first of all, let's stress the parking. Yes. Um, will there be cross easements to allow for the parking to access the rear yard? Yes, there will be. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, at five Tovar, there's going to be one space and three at um, at nine. Uh, would you mind repeating that? Sorry, you broke up for a second there. Sorry. So the, at so how many parking spaces in the rear yard altogether? Uh, three total, one at one at number five and two at number nine. Okay, then going back to five Tovar, can you um, express uh, explain to us 
Um, the use of the basement, is there any bedroom space? What's the floor to ceiling height? Uh, how far above grade uh, is, uh, is is the, the sill? Can you talk that through with us? Uh, so I, the, the sill will, will be um, in accordance with the requirements under the building code. Um, we're gonna shoot for an eight that? foot finish ceiling height. And what's the sill requirement under? Um, the I do lead? not know the, the requirement offhand. 44 okay. inches. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. So yes, you I'm will be down there to, to finish answering your question. So you will continue to um, excavate if you should need to to get to what you need to do. Yes, and, and we do need to do that to allow for the proper clearance and and also just make it a better livable situation. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Well, here we go again. Um, nine tovar is fine. Um, uh, uh, five tovar, the basic, though, what they've done is to uh, broke it up uh, front and back. And the rear, it's not so much of a problem because the uh, below grade about two feet, but the front is below grade four foot ten, almost five feet. Um, so, and you got you've got a bedroom right in the front. Uh, so, I, I, there's, I mean, this is the same problem we're running into over and over again. Okay, and let's look at nine tovar. Is there any basement living in nine tovar? There is nine not. tovar is basement is storage. Is storage okay? Any questions from the board? Is there going to be a roof deck on this? Uh, there will not. Uh, there will not be. There will be front and rear decks in uh, nearly every unit, but no decks on the roof. So the height will remain as is of the existing building at number five. And then number nine will be built to match the height of number five and the other adjacent buildings. Okay. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Greetings, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Chantal Lima Barboza with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And a butters meetings was held on October 26th of this year, where the applicant presented both proposals and received support from the director butters. The mayor's office would like to go on record and support this proposal. Madam Chair, can I ask the applicant a question? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's just find out from Ms. Ambassador if there's anybody else to speak either in support or in opposition. Madam Chair, I have um, two raised hands and a uh, raised hand from Lorraine. I'm not sure if she wants to speak, but I have two other raised hands for this project. Madam Chair, uh, Secretary here, we have uh, numerous letters of support. Okay. Um, can I, uh, is this Dorchester? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can I hear from Joe, please? Yes. Okay, Joe, you've been unmuted. Hi, Joe. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. Joe? How about uh, Mr. Cole French? Go ahead, Joe. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office. We'd like to go on record in support of the project. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cole French? Let's see. Okay, you've been unmuted. Hello. Nothing here. Okay, May. Um, so let's take. Uh, I'd like to get to a motion. Let's take five Tovar Street first. May I have a motion? Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve with BPDA design review that would. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello, this is, uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. This is Will Cole French, and I just. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, um, Miss Ambassador. Time has come and gone. We are okay. in the middle Thank of a motion. Thank you for trying anyway. Um, so, uh, five Tova. This is a request to convert from a three to a four family dwelling. Uh, your motion, Mr. Alec. So the motion is to approve with BPDA design review to uh, make sure that there are no bedrooms in the front unit uh, of five Tovar in the basement. 
I will second the motion subject to a uh, cross uh, cross easement with respect to uh, five tovar and nine tovar for the parking easements. I, I accept that. Okay. All right. So you are uh, supporting then the conversion from a three to a four family? With the proviso that I suggested, yes. Okay. Um, the, may, is there a second? Yeah, that was seconded by uh, Ligris with oh, respect sorry, to the cross easement. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Any aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Another one for nine Tovar, please. Motion to approve BPDA design review. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that one. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Ambassador, did you say that Center Street was on? Yes, yes, they are. Let me. All right, I'm going to recall Center Street, Madam Chair. Calling BOA 104 Center Street. This is a removal advisor from the previous owner and change to the new owner of the violations, Article 6, Section 4. Change to a previous decision of the Board of Appeal. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah. Uh, four Center Street in Jamaica Place. Tell us what you're proposing to do. Supposed to change the owner's uh, owner's name to the new one. And so, tell us what uh, what the name is and what the business is going to be. Uh, it's going to be like a, a, a Capis Pizza. It's going to be the same same. Uh, same 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 business but different owner okay do you yes. have experience with takeout uh we do have takeout and deliveries okay um is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal good afternoon madam chair members of the board my name is lindsay santana from the office of neighborhood services the applicant received the unanimous support of the jamaica Bay neighborhood council the mayor's office would like to go on record and support thank you Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Justin McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would also be on record in support. Uh, good afternoon from Cameron Foley, Councilor Sabi Georgie's office. Would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, anybody else? Uh, Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, motion to approve. Second, Joe. Uh, is this the, to this petitioner only and the usual takeout provisos? Yes, this petitioner only, usual takeout proviso. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All, uh, any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Calling the next case, calling BOA 107 16 House. This is seeking to change active existing single family structure to a four family structure and renovate, including a rear addition and creation of six parking spaces. To combine lots to form one new lot of 6,500 square feet. 6,500 square feet. The violation of Article 65, Section 41, off street parking and loading and overing. Article 65, Section 8, and the MFR is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 65, Section 9, Insufficient Rear Setback. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Board Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the petitioner, and I also have James Christopher from RCA as the architects on the proposal. <clears throat> We're seeking, as was mentioned, to renovate that front existing structure and to add an addition in the rear that will include a total of four condominium units and six rear parking spaces in the building. Um, just to point out, there will also be a full historic renovation of this project in our work with the community. Um, to go over the floor plans, this particular area is a zone 3F5000, which is common to this area, and our lot size is 6,500 square feet. The um, one, is in the front building, which is the existing building that will be renovated. That will have a separate entrance, would be a one bed, one and a half bath at 767 square feet. Unit two uh, in that same front structure would also be 767 square foot, one bed, one and a half bath with a separate entrance. 
Then we go into the addition portion, which would be unit three and four, which would be three bed, two and a half bath units. The height of these buildings, the building would remain what it is now, which is a two and a half story structure. Uh, we had a, an original proposal to raise the building, but um, in working with the community, we wanted to keep this. It is uh, pending uh, a further study at the Landmarks Commission. So when working with them, we came up with this plan. Yep. Um, so can you tell us what's the total uh, 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 gross square feet of the existing building and what's the total square feet of the proposed addition? So the, the addition is 32 feet wide, uh, sorry, 32 feet by th in length by 36 feet wide. Um, the existing building. Um, so sorry, that's um, 32 by 36? Correct, Madam Chair. That's that rear addition to the building. Um, the front building, I don't know if James is on the call, if he can attest to that. Um, it, it is, and, and the reason for this addition is uh, the community was adamant about keeping this building. Okay, in so tell us the square feet about the existing building. Um, is James on the call? If he could be. Yes, he's a panelist. Oh, James Christopher? Good morning, Madam Chairman. Is the board? Sorry, we can hear you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm. I was having trouble here and there and connecting. What? Uh, what's What's the gross square footage of the existing building? <coughs> I think it's around 25 or 2,600 square feet. Yeah, 2,600 square feet. I, I don't have the cover sheet in front of me, so I don't have the exact square footage. About 2,600 square feet. Adam. So the existing yeah. building is 2,600 square feet, and the addition is 20, essentially 2,300 square feet. That's correct. Okay, so you're doubling the size of the structure. Tell us how parking is working on this. So there is an uh, existing curb cut um, on the building, Madam Chair, and there will be six parking spaces in the rear. There would be three um, full-size spaces with three tandem spaces uh, behind it. And um, so we actually removed our parking violation from our last iteration. So we are parking compliant. Um, we have three existing violations. One is for use. This is a 3F district. Um, although there are four and sixes in the area, we're proposing four, so that's MFR. Um, FAR is 0.5, what's allowed. We're proposing 0.74. And our rear yard is close. We're at 27 feet, 10 inches, and 30 feet is what's required. the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? The warnings are okay. It is a pretty dramatic increase in density. Is anybody here to speak in support of this? Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary, uh, just Bob uh, D'Amico from BTD has spoke on this one. Yeah. Uh, he said 16 Howe Street should be approved for four spaces only. Also, the curb cut shown plans is 20 feet. It should not exceed 12 feet because there is no on street parking on both sides of Howe Street. Okay. Um, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Greetings, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Chantal Lima Barbosa with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant started a community process with my predecessor. Since then, they've had multiple bidders meetings and presentations to the Hancock Street Civic Association. While Hancock Street Civic Association opposes the proposal, the applicant has made significant changes to the plans to address the concerns presented by the community. That being said, the Mayor's Office would like to go on record and support this proposal. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council and Frank Baker's office would also like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support and we also have letter of opposition from the Hank Clark Association. Madam Chair, I have one caller uh, with their hand up. Thank you. Hi, caller, uh, 407. Hi, uh, this is Tiffany and Janice Sales, Director Butters uh, to 16 Howe Street. Uh, we're one of the many Director Butters who uh, have an opposition to this uh, project for the excessive unit, um, as well as excessive uh, tandem parking spaces. 
Um, in addition, the building has a stock value. We would really like as, as, as well as a lot of neighbors who see the uh, pennant, the outcome of the uh, landmark commission's uh, position on this home. But uh, we have been against this um, against this project um, due to uh, the many uh, details I just described. So I just wanted to go on record saying that again. Um, that again, uh, ourselves as well as some of the direct others that are affected. It's not a through street. It's just many different variables. We do not support this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have another hand raised. Thank you. All right, caller six one seven four three six. You've been unmuted. Yes, my name is Wilma Brown. I live at nineteen House Street and have lived there for almost three years. I too oppose this. As for the comments that my neighbors previously mentioned. Thank you. Program. Thank you. Um, can I hear from Will because I cut him off the last time? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to go on record as uh, opposed to this project. I live at 16 Rill Street, which is within the 300 foot abutter range, and I have followed this project carefully. Um, there are a number of features of it, the density, um, I, the lack of accuracy in communication. There is no current curb cut. You can see that clearly on Google Maps. I don't know why the developer is stating that there's a curb cut. There is none there. And in fact, there's a light post directly where they plan to put it. Personally, I believe single family homes are rare in Dorchester and that they should be preserved um, to maintain a mix of diversity within the community. And I second um, and third all of the concerns that my neighbors who I know have expressed. Thank you. Um, uh, Jeff uh, from yeah. the BPDA. Yes, Madam Chair, members of board, Jeff the BPDA. Uh, our recommendation was denied without prejudice. Um, to echo Mr. Ehrlich's comments, uh, the addition of this is just massive. And because it's a forbidden use and the, the density of the proposal, we are uh, on the record in opposition. Okay, thank you. So given that information, may I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Sorry, Council, it's been denied without prejudice. Calling the next case, calling DOA 112 5859 33 to 39 Seven Hill Avenue. This is removed the takeout proviso, the violations, Article 7, Section 4. Advisor to this petition or link. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Tom Miller, McDermott Quilty Miller, 28 State Street, Boston, Suite 802, representing the owner and applicant, uh, 3339 Seven Hill Ave, LLC. So tell Madam us Chair, Chair, Lee, Madam, Madam Chair, Lee Griff recusing for the record. Thank okay. you. Um, so can you please tell us what the business is, the name of the business, the petitioner, and if they have experience with takeout? Yep, so the, the applicant is uh, 3339 Seven Hill Ave, who's a property owner who's applying to remove the, um, to remove the proviso. Uh, this, they have a, a, a separate entity that's gonna be coming in to operate the, the uh, this is the former Venice Pizza location uh, at that spot and operated for over 40 years as a takeout restaurant space. Uh, Jason Wiseman and the management team um, are going to return this neighborhood institution um, right, to provide the affordable options for the residents of the community. Um, they have the management team, um, which is Winter Brothers LLC, which has, um, among others, Josh Warner, who has experience in the restaurant industry, and John Alexia um, Charis, who also has a lot of experience in the restaurant industry. Okay, hold on. Um, so the name, the, what is going to be the name of this restaurant? The, the restaurant is going to be Venice Pizza LLC, is Venice Pizza. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, the plans, I mean, they're de minimis. We're making almost no changes. Uh, yeah. Maybe paint to the exterior and uh, upgrading the kitchen and interior to be ADA compliant. Okay. 
minimal work. Okay, hold on, Mr. Miller. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Vandell, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. There was an abutters meeting held for this property, and they met with the Columbia 7L Civic Association um, with no large concerns raised. We would like to go on record in support and ask for continued BPDA design review, specifically around the grates on the front of the property. And Madam Chair, I can say I've spoken with the, the applicant uh, regarding those grades. Um, they Mr. are willing. Mr. Miller, can you please hold on? We're just in the process of still taking testimony. Yes, okay. Is anybody else here to speak? Ms. Ambassador, is there, are there any raised hands? No, ma'am. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve for this petitioner only with the usual takeout language with the design review uh, as far as grades are concerned. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're all set. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1005295, 571B Washington Street. This is planning to open a dispensary at 571B Washington Street. Violations Article 65, Section 15, Cannabis Dispensary is Conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, this is Kyle Smith of KDS Law, business address of uh, 359 Newbury Street, 5th floor, Duck Bay. Uh, on the call with me is uh, Jeff Similian, who is presently owner, the proponent, and also CEO. I have Rob Nichols on the line, or on the phone as well, or on the, on the call, who is proponent owner, COO, and also a licensed contractor. Uh, Jonah um, Magnacott, who is the project architect. And I also have John uh, uh, Gurini, who is the, the uh, chief security officer. So tell us what's being proposed. Uh, Madam Chair, we currently have an existing non-utilized restaurant. Uh, the proponent has submitted plans to ISD. There's an associated refusal letter from 2019 in September. They have been through uh, all of the ups and downs inside and outside of uh, the city. Let me ask you, so this is yes. um, 571B. What's the B for? It's, um, is this next to the Citizens Bank? Uh, it is to, if you're looking at the property, ma Madam Chair, that is to our right. So, you know, yes, it's in close proximity to the Citizens Bank. So, this is five, okay, let me just, oh, I see it's next door to the Citizens Bank. Okay, so give yes, us sir. details. Tell us how many square feet, hours of op operation. Um, this is recreational, right? Yes, Madam um, So, give us details, please. Perfect. I will let the project architect step in. I just want to let you know that as provided to ZBA Council, we just received dated today a letter of support from the uh, Boston Cannabis uh, Board, and that's been provided to ZBA Council. Thank Solely you. seeking a variance for a youth recreator for the use, conditional use of a cannabis dispensary. I'll let the project architect step in to answer uh, square footages, et cetera. So, um, I, 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 whoever it is that's on the team can answer this. Tell us how um, the flow is going to work. Uh, tell us when deliveries are, where deliveries are stored, where is that going to be security, how will lines be handled, and if anything will allow for online um, uh, reservation of product. And uh, I think I said hours of operation. Jeff, are you on the call? If not, I can step in as a COO, Robert Nichols, Madam Chair. Um, so the hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. per our host community agreement. Um, as far as security. Is that seven days a week? It is seven days a week. However, we are going to see how the uh, quick flow is and, and make adjustments accordingly to see what days will close or we will reduce hours. From what we understand, you know, Sunday evenings in, in this industry have been very quiet. So more than likely, yet yeah, be minimal hours on Sundays. Uh, okay. but so go ahead with the rest of the answers. As far as how we're going to handle the lines at the location, so we are encouraging pre-ordering. Our goal is to try to get as many pre-orders as, as much as 50 to 70 percent pre-orders. Um, so that people can come in very quickly and pick up and drop off. 
There is a municipal lot uh, to the left of the building. Um, we're attached to a, a, a store there that isn't operational right now. Um, but there's about 43 uh, municipal parking spaces in the, the city lot there. So we plan on utilizing that space um, so that folks know they can come in, pick up, and, and leave very quickly. We're also within a short walk to Shamit T Station. So, you know, obviously there will be a lot of folks coming via transit. And then we are going to have a bike rack at the rear of the building so that people can store bikes if they want to you know, ride their bikes um, over to the location. So, so tell us about uh, deliveries uh, of the of the product to the store. When will that occur? So deliveries will be tentatively in in the off hours, and it'll be at the rear of the building, um, so that it doesn't disturb our normal flow of business or flow of traffic. Um, there is an adjacent parking lot which we have an easement to access for deliveries there, um, and so as the product comes in at the rear door here, as you'll see on the plan. It'll be taken in and then Wade can confirm that we have the proper product and then it'll be brought down into our storage vault um, in the lower level of the space. Total square footage is 1,700 uh, square feet on the upper level. Same for the lower level. Uh, the lower level will be used primarily for storage only. And so the access will be through Aspinwall Street? Correct. So the delivery access will be through Aspinwall Street. That's correct. Okay. Um, yeah, and I know because the court is there, that public lot fills up pretty quickly. Um, tell us what your security plan is. So we are, have a third party, uh, Westcon uh, security team that we'll be using. And John Greedy, John, are you on the call? He can speak. Okay. Perfect, perfect. If you want to take uh, just security yes. Plan. Yep. Um, uh, Ms. Nichols, can you tell us very quickly? Will there be a security on site all the time while the facility is open? Yes, there will be. So we'll have security. Uh, when we initially open, we're going to have two to three security uh, personnel on site during all hours of operation, as well as the first month, uh, the Boston police officer detail, just to really ensure the flow of traffic is, is happening in a way that is conducive to not disrupt, uh, you know, Common Square, which we know is a very busy uh, location. And um, do you, does anybody in your team have experience with running uh, one of these facilities? So we have strategic partners uh, we're in talks with to help with the day-to-day -day operations. But being that it's a new business, you know, I, I have a significant amount of business experience and my partner, Jeff, as well. So we run real estate offices. Um, I have a retail background. I worked uh, for the retail industry at the executive level um, as well for Stop and Shop Corporate for many years. So. While we're new to cannabis, we're not new to retail sales and retail business. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Alec? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Greetings, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Chantal Emer Barbosa with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. A community process was held by my predecessor for this proposal. While the Codman Square Neighborhood Council opposes cannabis establishment in this area, we acknowledge that this is an equity applicant that has been approved by the Boston Cannabis Board. Additionally, this proposal is located in a business district and will stimulate economic development in this area. That being said, the mayor's office would like to go on record and support this, this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have no raised hands. Is uh, Rudy... Uh, Madam, Chair. Uh, Madam yeah. Chair, Secretary here. We have eight letters of opposition. Okay. Um, Mr. Ambassador, can you check, please, again, if there are any raised hands? Mm -hmm. There was just right, a... Excuse me. Oh, yep, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and mem uh, members of the board. My name is uh, Derek Bonner, and I'm located at 356 Lincoln Street, uh, apartment 5, Waltham, Massachusetts, and I'm speaking in favor of the proposal by Low Key Dispensary. Uh, Jeff Samilian, Rob Nichols, and Low Key have done so much great for the community, so I'm in full support of minority-owned businesses in the area getting an opportunity to give back and stay back within the community. So, hopefully, I'll for the update. Thank you. Is uh, may I hear from uh, Rudy Lambert? I don't see that person on the call. Second. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, yep. Yeah. All set. You've been unmuted, Rudy. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and um, the members of the board and the chairman. Um, I'd like to speak in support of Loki Dispensary. 
um, opening up a dispensary in the Common Square location. I think it would be great for the community and that they'll do a lot of good work, you know, in, in um, hiring in the minority aspect and also just providing, you know, good space for their employees and the community. Rudy, can you please put your address on the record, please? Yes, um, 27 Moore Street, Dorchester, Massachusetts. Thank you. Alex Middleton, please. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Alex, you're muted. Raising my hand in support of uh, Jeff and Loki dispensaries because it brings much needed jobs to the community. Uh, it also enables and uh, empowers people that have been marginalized by the war on drugs. And in addition to that, I've spoken to them extensively. We're training people on you know, how to set up LLCs. And overall, I think it's a great idea. I live at 61 Bernard Street, Dorchester, Mass. Thank you, Jessica. Yep. Oh, Jessica, you've been unmuted. Thank you. My name is Jessica Landers, and I reside at Six Charge Lane in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. And this is in support of Loki Dispensary. We have worked with uh, Jeff Simillion very closely, and he is the right person to bring something to this area. Thank you. Thank you. OK, given all that information, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair? Yes. My name is Mark Conrad. I'd like to speak. Um, uh, Mark, go ahead. Um, uh, Mark, give us new information, please. Uh, put your name and address on the record. Yeah, name is Mark Conrad. My address is 66 Parkway Crescent. And I am the CEO of Westcon Personal Protection. All of my business, 99% of my business is done in the Boston area. So, so Mark, are you the security firm for this? Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm okay. I don't need to hear from you. Thank you. No offense. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Which to approve. Approve. Okay. Approve the signage. Yeah. Is there a second? And to, this, and to this petitioner only. Yeah, this petitioner only. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling the next case, calling VOA 103391, 16 Colonial Avenue. This is two car parking, the violation of Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of off street parking area, and Article 65, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, I have a note here. I don't know if you have updated plans. Does Mark have updated plans? I, uh, I have a plot plan. So I understand that the office has made every attempt to get in touch with the applicant and there's been no response. May I have the applicant on the line, please? Mr. De Silva, are you, the, are you speaking on behalf of this project? Cesar? <clears throat> Is the applicant here for Colonial Ave? Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Fortune, let's just move on. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1057138, 26 Doncaster Street. This is new construction of a single family residence. The violation of Article 67, Section 9, lot area is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, lot width is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, so the board, my name is Alfonso Sierra, I'm the architect, and I'm representing the, the client, uh, Vidal Garcia. And what we're proposing is a single family residence, uh, a Gambrel style in uh, um, basically three bedrooms with uh, four bathrooms, 
uh, finished basement, uh, finished first floor and second floor, and not finished attic. Um, so, the so lot this is there, tell us this is so this is a one F six thousand square foot lot. What's the size of this lot? The lot is non-compliant. It's about fifty uh, five thousand two hundred and four square feet, so right. it doesn't meet the minimum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So the stop parking will work. I mean, right now there's uh, there's parking in the back. The client lives, if you can see on the left, uh, he lives on the left side and he owns this lot and he uses the back of it right now for parking, but we're shifting the, um, the, the curb cut to the right so that we can have a driveway to the back. Um, okay. So it will work. I, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing that it seems like it works. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, the plans are minimal, but they're adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, we have six letters of opposition. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Coppelton with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record in opposition to this proposal. Um, we did facilitate a community process for this application. Um, unfortunately, they were not able to get any support from any of them. Uh, there were some concerns around the parking situation, the size of the lot, as well as the size of the house. And I believe uh, a number of letters of opposition submitted on the record in the last couple of years. So may I ask you, um, this is uh, one family proposed in a one family zone. Um, and so this, and it feels like it's um, 800 square feet smaller, but I'm suspecting that all the lots pretty much on the road are non-conforming to 6,000. But there's still opposition to this project. Madam Chair, was that directed to me or the applicant? That's directed to Mr. Coppinger. Yes. Uh, no, I do understand the the lot size, uh, and I believe a number of the lots on the street are equal to or close to 5,200. What this one's presenting, um, but we we didn't hear. I haven't heard any support for this proposal since the application uh, came across my field. Okay. Um, anybody else to speak on this project? Madam Chair, I have four raised hands. Let's go, let's go, please. Alex, you've been unmuted. Hi, my, my name is Alexis Rosenblatt. Uh, I live in 30 Doncaster Street. I'm immediately next door to the proposed construction. Uh, I have strong opposition to the property. Uh, one, there are just too many variances and the lot size is simply too small for the size of the proposed house. And the other is that part of the proposal, which you can see includes property beyond the chain link fence next to and including part of my existing driveway, which I install. And I would submit that the land is subject to a claim of adverse possession and would further shrink the size of the legal building that they're trying to place in the lot. So essentially, uh, your uh, bottom line issue that I gather from you is that you feel the building is too big and secondly, you're concerned about the parking. I'm concerned that part of the proposal includes removing the existing fence and part of my current driveway, which I have, which including all of the, the I, I would say that has been not used by them for a significant amount of time. Okay, so, so you're trying to claim adverse possession of that driveway. You're trying to claim adverse possession of that driveway then. Okay, anybody else to speak on this project? Can I ask something about that driveway? No, 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 no questions right now. Let's just go ahead with this proposal. Let me, let's just go ahead with testimony. Joe Prondack, you've been uh, unmuted. 
Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Joe Prondack. I live at 111 Gallivan Boulevard in Dorchester. But I'm speaking on behalf of my aunt and uncle uh, who live at 10 Doncaster Street on an 8,000 square foot lot, and they've been there for 50 years. Um, I just want to reiterate uh, what I said in my letter. Uh, this project is much too big. It is, in, in reality, a, a three-story house uh, with the potential for 4,000 square feet of living space. Uh, that could be added within the house in the future um, and that there's also that there's um, this will take away the parking from the existing 22 uh, Doncaster Street so they're while well, they're providing two parking spaces for the new house they're taking away all of the parking for the existing house um, and further on that I mean that there's absolutely no um, hardship demonstrated here or special circumstance that would justify the variance. Therefore, my aunt and uncle, Philip and Susan uh, Smedley, are in strong opposition to this. And also, I would add there are a number of lots on that street next door and across the street that are that exceed the 6,000 square feet. So, this is not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's up? Okay. And Cesar De Silva, you've been unmuted? Uh, yes. Hi. Are you here to speak on Doncaster Street? Uh, no. I'm here to speak 16 Colonial. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've moved on, so just uh, stay on and we'll get back to you. Uh, so, um, so did we hear from everybody? Let's hear from the attorney for the project or the applicant. Are the architect for the project? Yes. Um, basically, I, I don't agree with many of the comments. The, um, first of all, the survey was certified by a surveyor, and there was, there's, the property is owned by, by Vidal Garcia. I never heard of any adverse a conflict or such. And second of all, all the properties, this building is no larger than anything that's around there. Something so like I'm, I'm looking at um, Google Maps, and there's a fenced-in area. Is that part of your proposed property? Yeah. I mean, it's whatever it's within the survey. It was okay. legally so, certified. So um, I'm looking at Google Maps, and uh, it looks like all the properties on that side of the street um, have these smaller lots. Uh, however, they look like they're one and a half possibly two stories so it's I can see I, I can see on that side of the street why the opposition is there the story um, is the same the uh, average it's okay, below 35 so, feet and it's not, two and a half stories uh, Mr. Ambassador can you mute mute this person um so given this information may I have a motion please <laughs> And remember, sometimes the hardest thing to build is a one family in a one family zone. <laughs> right? So, may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to deny without prejudice. Is there a second? Uh, second, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I think I'm opposed. I too am in. I too am in. I am opposed because I do believe that this person then has no property rights if they can't build a one-family in a one-family zone. Madam Chair, I'm opposed as well. Ed Devoe. Ed Devoe. Okay, so motion does not carry. May I have another motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to approve with uh, BPDA design review. Is there a second? Second, Ed Devoe. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Ligris opposed. Motion, um, Ligris, you're opposed. Motion carries. Uh, and please, um, Jeff, can you make sure there's very significant design review because it does not look like this proposed design is contextual. I will. Yep. Thank you. Calling the next two cases, calling BOA 109-9399-32 Perkins Street. The companion case, BOA 109-9404-32 Rear R. Perkins Street. This is for 32 Perkins. A change of office from a three-family dwelling to a two-family dwelling. Extend living space into the basin with the second kitchen for unit one. 
The violation of Article 55, Section 41.12, two or more dwellings on the same lot. Article 55, Section 9, the main entrance must face the front lot line. Article 55, Section 9, the floor to ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the side yards insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the rear yards insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. This is for 32 rear, uh, 32R Birkin Street, demolish the existing carriage house, garage, constructing new one family structure of similar size. Both buildings, <coughs> the renovation and change to both buildings. The violation, Article 55, Section 40, R Street parking and loading requirement. No front yard parking is allowed. Article 55, Section 40, R Street parking and loading requirement. Article 55, Section 40.5A, parking maneuverability, Article 55, Section 41.12, two or more dwellings on the same lot. Article 55, Section 8, use of regulations, Article 55, Section 8, lot, lot, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the floor to ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Timothy Burke. I have a business address of 142 Berkeley Street in Boston. And with me today is also the owners. So, Tim, let me just ask you, is this the project that, come, that came before us to have the Airbnb? Yes, that was a proud, uh, just a little over a year ago, we appeared before the board and uh, that uh, request was denied. Yes, so, so at that point, it was essentially the same layout of the current building um, and then that second building on the same lot. Um, and I think we had a, an issue then with the second building on the same lot. Tell us what's changed. I mean, in addition to, you know, the concept of, uh, of that, air, that illegal Airbnb, uh, tell us what's changed in this in this version. Yes, the uh, we went back to the drawing board, and the um, the idea was to uh, convert the three family that you see here in the photograph to a two family, and then to rebuild the carriage house that's in the back. You can just see a little bit of it there behind the building mm -hmm. in the photograph on your screen, and that would be a single family. The idea was to. Um, uh, make these uh, family oriented units so the uh, first floor and basement would be combined into one unit that would be 2,919 square feet and the second and third floor would be combined into one unit at 2,579 square feet. Okay, um, I'm still, uh, I don't know, Tim, you might know that um, you know, we're generally not supportive on two buildings on the same lot uh, because it, it allows very little privacy and open space and, and, and use of the backyard. Um, so, um, you know, just to put that out there, the second- yes, I, I am aware the, um, it is an, there is an existing carriage house there now that was yeah, occupied at some point. House is, uh, I mean, I understand a carriage house is a carriage house. It's Correct. meant to be maybe something else. But tell us about the extension of the main building into the basement. What's, what's the floor to ceiling height in the basement and what's the use of that space? The, uh, there would be additional living space in the basement. It has a nine foot ceiling. It's uh, quite a, it's nice and dry. It's quite a good basement to work with. So, uh, again, with a nine foot ceiling, it doesn't seem too much like a basement. The, uh, the sill would be for the egress windows, which we are uh, used to on the left there. That sill would be 30 inches below grade and uh, well within the three feet that is allowed before you need to add a ladder to a window well. So we were proposing two bedrooms in that level and a family space. Um, there had been a little convenience kitchen shown there, but at the JP Neighborhood Council, there was concerns about that. So we have removed that from the proposal. Okay. And the first floor are the, is the primary living space for that unit. The proposed addition is a new stairway at the rear of the building because the existing stairs and uh, it's an old, uh, very small stairs. So 
we're looking to improve the access to the upper level unit with that stairway. So am I reading this right, is that the first unit would be a four bedroom? Yes, correct. Both units would be four bedrooms, four bedrooms. ones in the main building. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and um, in the carriage house, what is um, the proposed, uh, it's proposed as a one family structure of similar size to the existing building? Is that what's being proposed? That is correct. We did go through the Article 85 demolition uh, review with this uh, carriage house. Yeah. And the uh, proposed replacement carriage house would be uh, have 2,185 gross square feet of floor area. Okay. And there would be a total of four bedrooms in that as well. The existing carriage house is in, it's in fairly poor condition. It did have a fire at one time. So um, we propose to uh, add a sprinkler system to this. And I forget how many units came through when it was a proposed an Airbnb. I believe we had 17 bedrooms at that time, which uh, I had caused concerns about the density. So now we're down to 16 bedrooms? Well, yes, I think that um, a lot of what I'm seeing today is that a bedroom is often used for an office for where people are working remotely. So, but yes, that is correct. Okay. okay. Excuse uh, me. Uh, we, so uh, I just want to say plans more, um, we have so 12 okay. bedrooms, not 16, 12. It's three. It's a three family with four bedrooms. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, um, how are the plans? Well, um, this looks a lot uh, like the same uh, warmed over uh, plans. I, Mr. Burke, you said that the that the kitchenette in the uh, basement had been removed. It's on the plans that I have. Um, I submitted new plans to uh, the board for this presentation. So it's on the one that's on the screen is what we're proposing. That does not have a kitchen in the basement. Um, can you go down and show that? Because the ones that I was given just a few days ago have the uh, kitchenette. This is it here on your left. You can see the basement. It was in that area where it's labeled hall. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not proposing to do that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, that I mean that that was uh, that caught my eye because it seemed like that in fact it was uh, the goal was to create a separate unit. Yeah, the uh, plants are really quite different than the original. You know what we proposed as a boutique hotel was the original proposal. I totally reworked them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Madam Chair, uh, Bob D'Amico spoke on this one. He said 32 Perkins should only have uh, three spaces. There exists on-street parking on the opposite side of the building. Uh, okay. Um, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Con Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and a butters meeting was held on September 1st, 2020, where butters expressed support for this proposal. The Jamaica Plain Neighbor Council also supported the proposal, so the Mayor's Office would like to support our support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have three hands raised. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, Karen Foley would like, uh, from Council of Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Ms. Ambassador. Okay, you're all set. All right, we get the. Right, uh, and I have Justin McCleary. Yep. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. It's Justin McCleary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. The council would also like to go on record support. Thank you. All right, and I also have David uh, Jerry. Second. David, you've been unmuted. Hi, my name is David Gary. I'm a teacher in Boston. I live at One Maple Street. I'm in support of this plan. I always shop at the Whole Foods right next to it, and I think it's uh, going to be a beautiful building. Thank you. Thank you. And I also have Max. Okay. Max, you've been unmuted. 
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Max Glickman. I live at 7 Glendale Terrace in Jamaica Plain. I fully support this project. Uh, I agree that we need more density in Jamaica Plain, and I like the fact that there are four parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve a design review. Second, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. And for the record, I too am in, I'm opposed because two buildings on the same lot, on a very small lot like this, seems overly dense. Um, there are five, five people in support, so the motion carries. Madam Chair, we're gonna, Madam Chair, we're going to go back to Colonial Avenue, the case BOA 104-3391-16 Colonial Avenue. This is two car parking, you have violations of Article 10, Section 1, limitation of our street parking, and Article 65, Section 9, use of low for space is insufficient. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Just for the record. Uh, please put your name and address on the record, Cesar, and let's go. Okay, my name is Cesar De Silva, uh, representing Dominguez De Silva. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me start at the beginning. How many uh, how many families, is this a two family or a one family? And is the parking in the front yard or is it in the side yard? And finally, the last question is, is there parking on that side of the street? Uh, yes, there is parking on that side of the street. Uh, is it, a, it is a two family and we are proposing two off-street parking. And is it in the front yard or in the side yard? On the side yard, on okay. uh, facing the left side of the of Okay, the how are the plants, Mr. Ehrlich? Well, as you can see, it is, it is side yard, so that's okay. Um, the drawings, uh, um, Paula, can you just uh, scroll down just a, just a little bit? I believe, no, the other way, the other way, I'm sorry, scroll. Uh, it's a 14 foot curb cut, and there's no reason for that. The 12, 12 is, uh, is plenty, and you know, you know the sidewalk space is, uh, is precious. So um, other than that, it's fine. Okay, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Whitney Salasa with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I did hold an abides meeting for this project, and we would like to go on the record and support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Justin Gardner, on behalf of City Council, Andrea Campbell's office. We would also like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, there are no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve the proviso that the uh, uh, dry, the curb cut not exceed 12 feet. Do we need to do Second, that? Madam. Do we need to do that through design review, Mr. Olick? I think that's the only issue. So I think if that's a proviso, that's fine. Okay. So uh, and it's been second motion. Uh, is it, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Following the next case, calling BOA 1113797-36 Nellingen Circle. This is to remove and demo the existing one-story frame structure, an existing foundation erected two and a half story new construction. Violation of Article 55, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive in Article 55, Section 9, the bill and height is excessive in stories. Name and address for the record, please. Gary Martel, I live at 15 Brownson Terrace in Jamaica Plain. So tell us what's being proposed. Uh, yes, my partner and I, James McCabe, uh, currently own 36 Nelly and Crescent in Jamaica Plain. Uh, it's an existing uh, non-conforming single family house in the 1F9000 district. Uh, we are proposing to uh, save the existing foundation, um, remove the existing one story 888 square foot uh, ranch, and we propose to add uh, an addition, 26 by 24 addition off the back and add a two and a half story 
uh, structure, single family home on the top of that uh, combined old and new foundation. So what's the total square footage of this proposed one family? Uh, it's a little under 3,000. It's like 2,993. <coughs> About um, 350 square feet over of what's allowed. And so your violation is building height and FAR. Tell us how the parking is proposed to look. Um, if you pull up the screen there, that elevation right there. On the left side is an existing driveway. Uh, it won't change. Uh, the existing house has actually a garage uh, under on the rear of it. Uh, we're proposing the same concept. We're not moving the curb cut. Um, and obviously with that, that 24 by 26 addition off the rear there, uh, that two car garage would be basically under part of the two and a half story frame. And uh, the additional 10 feet would become a flat roof that would uh, entertain the deck for that house. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Alec? Uh, drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Lindsay Santana from the Office of Neighborhood Services, and the voters meeting was held on August 31st, 2020, and the applicant received the support of the Jamaica Hills Association and the Jamaica Bay Neighborhood Council. The mayor's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary uh, here. We have one letter of opposition from the director butter it's just opposed to the size of the project. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley would like to go on record in support of this project. From Boston Councilor Anissa Rasabi, George's office. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, there are no raise hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. The date is on the Thank you. Thank <laughs> I'm sorry, um, Ligris, were you not? Second by Ligris. Oh, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. On the next case, calling BOA 1161644, 143 Dent Street, is to erect a new single family dwelling. The violation Article 56, Section 39, R Street parking is insufficient. Article 56, Section 8. Lot width is insufficient. Article 56, Section 8, lot frontage is insufficient. Article 56, Section 8, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 56, Section 8, front yard is insufficient. And Article 56, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Well, um, Brendan Donovan, I live at 143 Dent Street. And I'm the general contractor for the project. So please tell us what's being proposed. All right, so we're proposing to tear down and rebuild an existing single family home. Um, the existing home is, I believe, 1,075 square feet. The new proposed home, um, the finished first floor and second floor, will be 2,690 square feet, not including the basement. Um, it's going to be a four bedroom, three and a half bathroom, single family home. Um, a big reason for doing this project, at least for Brenton and his father, John, I used to actually have John come and move into the home with him. John will have living on the first floor, so we won't have to be, you know, battling with the stairs. He currently lives in Rosendale right now and uh, really, really uh, needs to be living on a one story. Is this a prefab or is it stick built? Nope, it's going to be stick built. Okay. Looks very bucolic. <laughs> okay. Um, um, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Just like to go on record support. Uh, we had an abutters meeting back in October, on October 8th. I believe only one neighbor attended who was in support. Uh, Brendan then went before the West Rocks Neighborhood Council on October 27th and received their full support. Uh, in addition, I received 16 letters of support from Director Butters. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, I have two raised hands. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have uh, one letter of opposition and about 10 letters of support. Thank you. Um, uh, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. Thank you. Is second, there a second? second All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I notice, Hansi, that you are on, and I notice, Eric, that you two are on. I don't know, is Jean on? No. Um, we had hoped to have uh, a, an end of year conversation with you, Eric, with you, Hansi, and all board members, uh, but it looks like this meeting is going to run pretty late. Um, so I don't know if uh, you two and perhaps the re rest of the board is available for perhaps a 45 minute conversation um, next week. I think I penciled in next week at 10 uh, because uh, just because I want before the new year sets in for the current board members, the alternates to meet uh, everybody, everybody else who has been approved by city council so we can go ahead and start the new year fresh. So Eric, uh, are you guys available? And I know that you, uh, Ligris, you have to run for sure. three o'clock. So I just wanna make sure that we all get a chance to talk before year's end. Hi, Madam Chair. I am available on the 10th this Thursday. Is that what you were asking I, for? Um, I think I was looking at Tuesday just because we generally meet on Tuesdays. Um, so Tuesday at 10, um, is that available? Erica, are you also available then? Yes. I am available. That works for me. Okay, so let's, uh, and, and, uh, and all the board members who are at this meeting, please um, make sure you're on it. And um, can I ask uh, Kevin if you can set it up, okay? That would be fantastic. Thank you so much, yeah. guys. Uh, sorry, yeah. you're running late. Too. No worries. Bye bye. Thank Thanks. Bye. Bye. I'm going to call the next case, calling BOA 1004672-249 Corey Road. This is a change in office from nursing home to a multifamily residential, erect 49,344 square feet, four-story, 34-unit building, and basement with 33 parking spaces. The violation is Article 51, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling use is forbidden use. Building is a forbidden. Article 51, Section 9, the floor ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the height is excessive in stories. Article 51, Section 9, the height is excessive in feet. Article 51, Section 9, the rear yard setback is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the front yard setback on Jordan Street is insufficient. Article 51, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Article 51, Section 57.2, the front modal alignment of Corey Road block is not met. Article 51, Section 56, off street loading is insufficient. Article 51, Section 57.3, the tra traffic visibility across the corner. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Quilty and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston, here on behalf of uh, the proponent, Jeff Yerman of uh, Brookline Development Corp, who's also on the line. Also with me is the project architect, Nitty John from Prelich Chelinsky Architects. Um, just briefly to give you the details, Madam Chair, if I may, um, this site is uh, approximately 17,952 square foot lot at 249 Corey Road in Brighton, uh, towards the top of uh, the hill at the intersection of Jordan Road and Corey. Uh, there is a 30 foot grade change uh, in this site, which you'll see in the presentation. What is being proposed um, is to uh, remove a existing non-conforming structure which was formerly the Corey nursing home building on this oversized lot uh, in the 2F5000 zone with a new residential development of four stories for 34 residential units with 33 parking spaces. Um, I will note too that uh, the bedroom counts for these, uh, these is of these 32, 30 or um, units, a majority of them are two bedroom units 
and they are nearly a thousand square feet. So they are intended to uh, provide options for uh, young families and uh, generously sized two bedrooms. There are 16 one bedrooms that are up to 800 square feet and no studios whatsoever. Um, there's also almost 8,000 square feet of open space, which includes a 17, uh, uh, 17 I'm sorry, 8,000 square feet of open space, which includes a 1,700 square foot uh, rear courtyard, as well as 1,500 square feet of roof terraced spaces. Um, the secretary read into the record of the zoning. Uh, we also had a very good outreach with the community. And so what you're so, seeing you know, is. Joe, uh, so yes, before, before we, we can rely on this, on the city to tell yes, us about the community process. Um, we rely on you for the technical piece. So tell us about the parking because that you yes, have a violation on parking. Yes, ma'am. So um, this, this uh, we have 0.97 spaces which is essentially one per unit. Um, and those are all garage spaces that are uh, and that have a driveway off Jordan Road, uh, which is as far away from the intersection of Corey. And that's something that was carefully developed with BTD and the BPDA through the Article 80 process. We actually came in with more parking than that, Madam Chair, uh, and the community and the city um, through the BPDA had asked us to adjust the parking down. We think that one per uh, per unit uh, is sufficient. We would have liked a little more. Um, we're also needing relief to have some tandem spaces, which you'll see on the plan, not all tandem spaces, just that small section towards the middle top that you see down in the plan on the right. Um, and those we would be, um, ID, you know, typically those would be provided for those tent two bedroom units where let's say a family or a couple would have two cars uh, and they would each have a tandem space or they would each have a space. So tell us, about, tell us about the roof terrace. Who is that accessible to? So the, um, the, the roof terrace is 1500 square feet. It's common to the building, um, but the way Mr. Fuhrman has several uh, very high quality long term tenant rental buildings in Brighton and uh, the way they work on this is and it's kind of COVID reflected, if you will, where they're they're broken into uh, movable sections and uh, reserved for folks in the buildings. So listening to you, Madam Chair and the members of the board about good sized units, it's also important that folks have open space uh, on the development. So we're pretty proud of that hold roof on, space. And if on, you look Joe. at the back. Hold on, hold on, Joe. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Uh, Colette, can you please show us the, um, the roof, um, the, the roof uh, terrace? Thank you, go ahead, Mr. Hanley. Yeah, um, and the other, um, because we are seeking relief um, for the rear yard um, is, is the courtyard at the rear, which you'll see on the landscape plan. Um, which I believe is a few clicks down from where you are right now. And that space is approximately 1,500 square feet of pretty lush, um, you know, uh, bluestone courtyard sort of patio space that is also accessible off the units uh, in the rear. So I think if you keep going down, Nitty, uh, on this, sorry, I'm on mine too here. If you can, if you go down, you'll see the landscape plan is age. This is, this is a different presentation. <laughs> or maybe there's not a landscape plan in there. So, um, okay, so it's in the rear left corner. So uh, it, okay. Yep. Because uh, I was just curious to see how you uh, blocked out the roof terrace so that there were, um, you know, mods, or, you know, yeah. uh, split off spaces. Yeah. We, we don't show the details of it. We made sure that the roof terrace, the edge was set further back. Joe, Glenn doesn't show that detail. And but so the, way, the way they do that, Madam Chair, and Jeff Fearman can talk about it is to use 
uh, uh, planters and bollards that are movable. And yep. I'm sorry. So we're trying yeah. to do a modular system where. Correct. Everything okay, is kind of in play with COVID, madam. And Chair. this is and this is going to be a proposed to be a rental then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good sized units, but rental. Okay, um, Mr. Olick, how are the plans? Uh, the drawings are very nice. Uh, my only question is uh, context. This seems like a uh, uh, surprisingly large project in the middle of a neighborhood that is mostly, um, you know, small, two or three smaller multifamily. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Ehrlich, a couple kind of mitigating aspects here. One is obviously it's a, as you noted, it's a 2F5000 uh, and there are around it certain, you know, uh, two, you know, two families and singles, but they all tend to be on smaller lots where of course an, an existing non-conforming uh, structure that there was the nursing home. But there are also two other lots immediately next to us um, on Jordan Road that are in Brookline that are also owned by the developer. And that helps to, you know, further buffer that. The other thing is with a 30 foot grade change, if you look at the front uh, photo of the site, um, it all goes up towards the back. And so what we did with the architecture is we took uh, the building and kind of set it into the grade. And then the third level uh, steps back to the fourth level, if you will. And that helps to kind of mitigate and put it into context. And I think Nitty has at the end of that presentation, you know, there are a few uh, renderings that show how it then begins okay. to comport considering the undulation of the site. Okay, so um, is there a grade change between, uh, no, I guess there isn't. So all the grade change is on this property in Brighton. Um, the uh, Brookline lots are still on grade or are they fairly uh, uh, level? So it, it, it undulates, Madam Chair. It goes, Quarry Road goes up and we're, yeah. we're towards the climb, right? And that's the third Jordan, foot. Does Jordan go up or down? Yes, oh. Jordan then goes up again. So that's the yeah. undulating. And so that's why it was so important for us to move the vehicular entrance uh, and we also created a separate ingress space for Amazon and Uber and Lyft and all that as far away from that intersection because it becomes down towards the intersection. It sort of drops down into a little ravine, if you will. So it's a very unique property. And uh, so, and so this is on a separate lot from the Brookline lots because yes, because yes, if the developer should go ahead and develop the second those other lots. Um, right. We just want to make sure that this this project sits on its own bottom. Yes, ma'am. That there isn't, um, you know, shared parking or double no, parking. parking Not at all. And, and I just mentioned that to Mr. Ehrlich to give context of the characteristics around us and how we fit in. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? <laughs> Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, like the record support of this proposal. Uh, was a robust community process was conducted by the BPDA. Uh, there were two public meetings, uh, one before the pandemic in person at the Brighton Marine, and then another, uh, the most recent was September 24th of 2020. Uh, they also met with the Brighton Alston Improvement several times, Alston Brighton Improvement Association several times. Uh, where they scaled back the building away from uh, from neighbors. Uh, they worked closely in creating that other egress, specifically for delivery vehicles and Ubers, and addressed a lot of concerns of the neighborhood. Uh, we think it's a great opportunity to transition this parcel, which has been a uh, disused nursing home for a while, to uh, quality residential units. Thank you. Uh, hi there, this is Jennifer Goldsmith from the community uh, in support. Is this the moment that I should speak? Jennifer, are you in Alston, Brighton? No, I'm the abutter on Jordan Road. Okay. Okay, um, go ahead. Your name sure. and address, please. Sure, Jennifer Goldsmith, 148 Jordan Road. So I live in the house that abuts the two Brookline lots. So, you know, next to the next to the 
new building. And I, I just want to comment both that Mr. Furman and his team have met multiple times with the community and we, Brookline and Alston Brighton have met together with him. We don't sort of see a big dividing line. We live contiguous to one another. And we've been appreciative of the number of changes that have been made in response to our concerns about height and about traffic patterns. And I think it's also worth mentioning that while these renderings show single family homes like the one that I live in, it's a very mixed neighborhood in that the number five Washington project is two blocks away, Winchester is two blocks away with a number of three or four story brick buildings. So this isn't so out of character. And um, given that it's going to be built and it's been an inactive nursing home, we feel like, and I have neighbors and I who have signed a letter to this effect, that this is a reasonable use and um, a responsible res uh, response to the community's concerns. And um, thank you. Yeah. May, I, may I have Moira, please? Okay, great. Moira? Laura, but I One second. Okay. Laura, you've been, you've been unmuted. Good afternoon. My name is Maura McCrave. I'm from Councillor Breeden's office. We'd like to speak in support of this project. We appreciate the proponent's willingness to work with community members and incorporate their feedback into their design. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, uh, City Council and East West Ivy George's office. would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Annabelle? <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joel, can you please? Yep. Joel, you've been unmuted. I'm Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Joel Kinney. Together with my wife, we own 248, 250 Quarry Road. We live directly across the street from this project. We'd like to go on record in support of the project. Thank you, Paul Sullivan. Oh, sorry. One second, Paul. You're all set. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council of Medical Clarity, Council to go on record in support, uh, as well as uh, go on record in support for 143 Den Street, the last project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, given that information, may I have yeah, a Secretary, motion? Madam Chair, Secretary, here, we have two letters of opposition. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BVDA design review. Is there second. a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. We're all set. Good luck. Call the 1230 rediscussion calling BOA 1118027135 Athens Street. This is to install a roof deck. The violations Article 68, Section 29, installation of a private roof deck on a lower roof, roof structure restrictions. Name and address. Pull the record, please. Michael Blute. I'm the architect working with the homeowner to um, put together the expansion drawings for the deck. Well, my address is 40 Willoughby Road, Milton, Mass. And is this existing? This deck was built in uh, 2019, uh, 2018. Um, the, the original deck was, there was an original deck uh, on the roof of a, that was 115 square feet. Um, we're proposing, we're trying to make corrections to that deck that was built in 2018. Uh, as an expansion and bring it up to code. So was it built with with adequate um, with with adequate uh, permits? Uh, no, it was not. It was a it was a miscommunication between the homeowners association, the owner, and the contractor. And was this did this project for its initial construction come before this board? I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe it was required to come in front of the board. I, I was not involved in the project at that time. But do, doing your due diligence, did you find out if there were any restrictions on this this construction about roof decks or head houses or hatches or anything like no. that? No, the homeowner had exclusive use of the of this area of the roof. The only restrictions that I'm aware of was zoning, uh, zoning restrictions and then building code restrictions. 
And what's the access to this space? Uh, there, this this floor is a penthouse level. It's one level below the main roof, roof of the building. Um, and this deck is dedicated to just the homeowner's use. So it's a penthouse unit. It's not accessed by a penthouse. So I w <clears throat> I'm the owner. Maybe I could comment on that. Hello. Mary okay, no, no, I, I, no, 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 please hold on. Um, Mr. Ola, can you please help uh, clarify? Well, actually, I can't because I wasn't given the plans for a preview. So I'm looking at, at the drawings right now. So is so you're saying this is a penthouse deck that, that you step out to? Exactly. So the original deck is on the drawing we're looking at is the red box on the left hand side. The deck was expanded out to the dotted line, which extends over towards the left hand side of the roof. It so, is dedicated to one unit on the roof. Uh, okay. the All right, so so it's a step out uh, deck, so that's fine. But um, you said it had to be code compliant. Why was the original deck not code compliant? Uh, the, the problem with the original deck was that when it was constructed, uh, it didn't have any tie down devices in, in terms of storm uplift. And then also the loading on the, the roof um, wasn't adequately distributed and the, the new design, the revisions to the deck uh, incorporate uh, distribution of that load across the roof. Okay. okay. It's, it's, a, it's certainly a much, it looks like a four times as big, right? Yeah, it, well, it went from 115 and then the proposed deck, uh, the adjusted and corrected deck will be 534. So it's almost five, yeah, almost five times as large, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition to this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Caldero from Councilor Spring's office. Please know we are not necessarily opposed to the project. We appreciate the owner's willingness to reach out and engage our office with any questions, concerns, we had on the proposal at the same time as roof decks might also be a concern for the same different lower end neighborhood association as well as neighbors in the area. We would like to see a little further engagement with the community on this issue before proceeding. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. On behalf of my colleague Kaylee Dillon, we would like to go on record at support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have two letters of support. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve, but I'm going to ask for BPDA to sign with you because this is a fold increase in the size of the deck, and I think that the uh, it, it would benefit from, from being reviewed for, for the scale. Okay. Is there a second? Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. You want to get ready to the one o'clock, Madam Chair? Of course. We're just only almost two hours behind. Madam, Madam Chair, I'm going to need to step up record um, for a um, for a work call. So, Mr. Ligur, uh, so Ligurus, how long do you think you'll be gone? Um, at least twenty or thirty minutes. I'll return okay. as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Following the first case for rediscussion, calling DOA 961 465 37 Monmouth Street. This is a change of auxiliary from two to four unit residential. Renovate, erect addition with head house and roof deck. The violation of Article 53, Section 9, the four family dwelling use is forbidden. Article 53, Section 9, the fluid area ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the height is excessive in feet. Article 53, Section 9, the height is excessive in stories. Article 53, Section 9, side yard setback is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, rear yard setback is insufficient. Article 53, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. And Article 27T-5, this is in the East Boston iPod. Can you address for the record, please? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, we're back before the board for rediscussion after a deferral uh, that uh, has resulted in some changes to this project, uh, which I do have and I believe the board has as well, uh, several of which would have eliminated some of the variances that were being requested. Uh, as the secretary indicated, this is a pre-existing two-family dwelling. It's located in Eagle Hill, 
section of East Boston. Our proposal uh, would involve the complete rehabilitation of the interior of this building. While the exterior is in somewhat of good condition, uh, we propose obviously to preserve the existing structure. Uh, we will also make some improvements consistent with the guidelines and suggestions of the Eagle Hill Civic Association standards that they have for properties at Eagle Hill. I want to highlight for the board a couple of the changes that we've made uh, when once we heard uh, opposition from Director Butters. Uh, this so, so uh, Council, can you just tell us what is being proposed? I'm not kind of interested in the changes. I'm interested in what the zoning requires and sure. what you're proposing. Sure. Um, so. This is a, a 2F2000 district, and while the long and pre-existing use would be conforming, we're proposing to make changes that would result um, in several dimensional uh, violations as well as the use. The proposed use would be four units versus the two units. Uh, and again, this would result, this would be the result of a small addition to the rear, which would be two stories total, and a small addition to the existing third level, which presently doesn't go all the way back uh, to the rear portion of the property. Originally, this proposal involved a full uh, third level plus roof deck and headhouse. Uh, the complete uh, extension of the third level has been eliminated uh, in order to address concerns of the director part to the left, uh, who has uh, indicated they are satisfied with the changes that we've made. Okay, um, so tell us the uh, unit breakdown. Is there occupancy in the basement? No occupancy in the basement is proposed. All of the living would be on levels uh, one, two, and the half level on the third. Uh, one of the units is a two bedroom plus, and the others are all one bedroom, uh, all one bath. And uh, average square feet for the one bedrooms? About 630 square feet for the one, and it's about a little over 1,000 square feet for the two bedroom plus. And then you're proposing a roof deck. Tell us about that. So the roof deck would actually be above the second level addition. We're not proposing any roof deck above the third level. So we have access from the uh, rear of the uh, existing, uh, I guess, half level on the third level. And, but it says it's access with a head house. That was the original, I think the description has remained the same, Madam Chair, um, but that head house, since our last hearing, both the head house and the roof deck above the third level have been eliminated. If we can go to the elevation, uh, I believe it's the next, uh, I believe it'll be the next screen. I think we're showing existing conditions there. There we go. So as we can see from the profile here, we're looking uh, at the front of the building as well as the left side of the building. Uh, the, the addition now on the top level only goes back about five feet, and there is a roof deck that would sit above the second level, no longer above the third level. Again. This is to address specific issues that we heard from abutters uh, regarding a view uh, quarter that would uh, uh, allow, or at least allow continued view to the city skyline. How are the parts, Mr. Olick? Well, the drawings are adequate. The, the drawings reflect the changes that Mr. Lenz is referring to. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? I'm clear, members of the board, with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to run the record support. During the community process, the, the Office of Neighborhood Services held three parties meetings where the applicant addressed several of the concerns. We also received two letters of support from direct partners. Thank you. Madam Chair, Councillor uh, Ricardo Patron from Councillor Edwards' office would also like to go on record to support. Um, they're having issues um, getting back into WebEx, but they did send an email. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We have two letters of support and one letter of opposition. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BTDA design review. I'll oh, second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good holiday. Uh, Madam you Chair, too. Support. See you in the new year. Yes. On the next two cases, calling VOA 9750657B for places. There's also a companion case for building code 99 VOA 9999007B for place. This is to correct and unsafe remove the front facade of the building and structural elements. <clears throat> the, the violations, Article 13, 13-1, insufficient radiation setback, Article 32, Section 4. This is in the G card. 
And for building code, we have the ninth edition, 780 CMR, chapter seven, section 705.8, exterior wall openings proposed. Three feet from the lot line is not permitted. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Stephen Kane, 173 Norfolk Ave, Roxbury, Mass. Um, also on this call today uh, is, the, is the homeowner here, David Trust, uh, and CBT Architects, uh, Dan Cellaramini and Alfred Wojowski, Harry Burles and Chris Erickson from McPhail, Geotechnical Engineers, and Jeff Lewis from Boston Coastal Consulting, Civil Engineers, and Mark Berthume from uh, Greenberg Tarig Attorney. So, um, you know, as is usually our case, we um, deal with the building code violation first uh, before going to the essence of the case. So tell us about the building code violations. Are you still requesting that those, those, the relief from the building code? Yes, the rear wall uh, is still in place uh, as it has been all along. We, we have left it in place. It's got two uh, portals in it, two wide open masonry portals. We are proposing building a wall inside that that has that is a that's a fire rated wall with inoperable glazing uh, in in line with those portals. Okay, so um, if so, so you are still continuing to request building code relief then? Yes. Is this building proposed to be sprinkled, sprinkled in any way? Yes. Okay. So Mr. Ehrlich, please, does that respond to the, to this um, request, the, or this uh, response to the building code? Well, um, I mean, we, as, as you said, uh, we, uh, virt except for in the case of head houses and hatches, we never grant building code relief. Um, and uh, I'm reluctant to do so. Uh, in this situation, there are there are other alternatives uh, routes that the uh, applicant has, but I don't think that we should break the precedent. Uh, Can I have request. a motion, please? Uh, motion to deny building code relief. Is there a second? Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's get to the meat of the case. Madam Chair, would you like to get G-Card out of the way here? Um, yes. Uh, Christian, please go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust. Um, while we do have the BWSC approval and no harm letters from the applicant, I would request a hold for signature at this time. Uh, my reasoning behind that is that it's my understanding that there's been ongoing discussions between the proponent and some of Butters, and there needs to be a modification to the approved um, groundwater recharge system. So therefore, we would need a new set of plans, and with the new set of plans would come a new Boston Water and Sewer approval letter highlighting those changes. Thank you. Madam Chair, we do have the no harm letter as well. Thank you. So um, please, Mr. Payne and team, tell us what's being proposed um, and why you're before us. We are, we're before you because um, we thought we were uh, doing a buy right renovation and at some point, um, ISD would deep into this with all, all sorts of uh, short form permits for various aspects of this. ISD said, oh, well, this isn't, um, this isn't a renovation, this is new construction. Uh, so we, um, so anyway, the, the existing rear wall. Uh, so tell us what's, what, was, what was on the site and what you're proposing as your final product. Um, there was a single family residence uh, with a, a garage at street level, uh, and we are proposing a, a single family residence with a garage at street level and a, and a uh, parking lift that, puts, that allows for a, one below ground parking space as well. Okay, what is the best, um, 
uh, sheet that we should be looking at uh, so that Colette can get through so we can see what this proposed building looks like? Um, do I have control of this to scroll? No, you do not, but tell us what the sheet is that we should be go looking at to give us the best story. Okay, well, I'm going to defer to, uh, to Dan from CBT to answer that question. Sure. Dan, put your name and address on the record and tell us that what we need to do here. Sure. Uh, Dan Joe Armini from CBT Architects, um, 110 Canal Street, Boston. Okay. Um, so we can go to the plans. If you go to the first floor, A100. Sorry, guys, it's a little bit slow just because um, the amount of pages. I can I can take you through the intent while you get to the page. So the intent is to build rebuild the home. Can, can I just say the 41 uh, 53 is uh, A201 if you want to. 41 okay in the meantime Daniel go ahead sure thank you uh, the intent is to rebuild the home to the exact envelope and dimensions that it previously existed uh, we had done some demolition to correct some deficiencies in the structure and the waterproofing and so what we're doing is we're um, we're in, we're attempting to rebuild the home um, the square footage of it will remain the same uh, the gross square footage uh, if you here we go so uh, the basement level here is below grade parking there's mechanical space utility space in laundry on the basement level we scroll to the next page the one remains largely the same as well it is level one parking so there's a garage on the first floor there's a foyer and an entry and stairs that take you up to the main living space which is level two go to level two Go ahead, Colin. There's kitchen, master bedroom, and dining area. Sorry, it's kind of freezing on me. I think it's oh. the amount of pages, so it might just be a tiny bit behind um, when you're okay. speaking. Sorry no about problem. that. No problem. Got it. And the third floor uh, remains the same. There'll be a uh, den area and a roof deck. So how long was it occupied as a single family? Uh, so um, I don't really know. We have decades. Um, our our client is not the first one to occupy it as a single family. So it's uh, always been taxed as a single family. That's correct. I don't know about always. I mean, I. I... Okay, so as as much as you know, it's been taxed as a single family. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, and Daniel, as you said, you maintain the envelope. <laughs> Um, you're going to still have a garage door uh, that will allow you to uh, drop a car into the basement uh, and you will have a, a, a car on that that level two? Correct. Yes. Okay, so two car garage. Uh, will you have a roof deck? Uh, there will be oh, there the previously roof. a deck on three and we're planning to reconstruct it to the same extent that previously existed. Okay. So, um, you know, in large part, the exterior and the interior is remaining identical to what was previously there. Okay. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, the plans are uh, thorough. Uh, they're, they're fine. Okay. Um, so, uh, and then uh, why, uh, so let's see, what was uh, Christian referring to? I know we have to hold it for signature. But what discussions might result in you changing the location of your uh, system, your recharge system? Um, I, I'd like actually to have uh, Jeff Lewis, our civil engineer, answer it because he can obviously be more accurate and more detailed in the explanation. Jeff, are you, are you available? Okay. Yes. Based on the uh, based on the comments from uh, the butters, we've moved the system to the center of the building of seven beavers place um, we've also addressed the overflow and put a drain out in the street so the overflow will drain uh, out of a catch basin um, so those plans will be resubmitted to Boston water sewer we've been in contact with both them and Christian on this to get final approval from Boston water sewer on these 
Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, how about, and so, uh, Mark, did I ask you how the plans were? Yeah. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is, are you speaking in support? Whitney. Oh, oh yeah, Rob Whitney, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to unmute. This is Robert Whitney. I'm the chair of the Beacon Hill Civic Association. I wanted to note that the um, we are speaking in support of the requested zoning relief. We had three meetings of our zoning and licensing committee and after lots of discussion, we determined to not oppose the requested zoning relief. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Lane is also, uh, uh, you've been unmuted, you're a panelist. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Hi, Jonathan. Okay, might have stepped away, sorry. I also have David Andrew Trust. Hi, David, you've been unmuted. Of the board, may I speak? Yes. Uh, this is Shanice Pimentel from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This proposal has participated in an extensive community process and at this time there is substantial opposition on record. This property abuts the Park Street School on Beacon Hill. We have received many letters of opposition from parents of students at the school who are concerned about the safety of the school's property in regards to um, the groundwater infiltration. As Christian Simonelli stated, the Mayor's Office would like to see an updated approval letter from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. The other notable concern expressed by Butters was a potential discrepancy in the FAR calculated by inspectional services. However, after multiple meetings with the Beacon Hill Civic Association, the proposal itself, which includes some revision, revisions detailed in the letter submitted by the association, received the vote of non-opposition. We are appreciative of the considerate efforts that the applicant has made to communicate with the Butters outside of the required community process. Given this information, the mayor's office would like to would like to see resolutions to the concerns of groundwater infiltration and FAR. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have numerous letters of opposition and two letters of support. So from um, what I can understand is that um, what is the, what is the name of the school again up there on the Park Street Street School? So the Park Street School is concerned about um, the groundwater infil the groundwater infiltration system affecting their building. Is that what I can understand? Is the bottom line? Uh, I believe the abutters just have issues because uh, the plans reflected something different. There was uh, updated plans uh, for the groundwater infiltration and they just want um, the plans to be submitted to Boston Water and Sewer Commission and for that, for those, uh, the updated plans to be approved by them. I believe they haven't done so yet. Okay, so as I, understand, as I understand it then, it's the ground, since it's just a simple one family dwelling, um, the, 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 the groundwater system, whatever it may end up being and where it might end up being located is what's of interest to the Park Street School. And the second is that um, FAR, but it looks like the FAR has for the most part been resolved because I just can't see that there would be significant uh, discrepancy between the uh, ISD calculations and anything else. Yes, I agree with that, Madam Chair. Okay, so- Could you just uh, get clarification if the mayor's office was in support or opposition because she went out, she went mute. Sorry, sorry about that. I was running out of breath. We are actually in support of the proposal, yes. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anybody here to speak from city councilor's office? either in support or in opposition. Is there anybody online uh, representing Kenzie Bach or does um, the counselor just uh, um, want to remain silent on this one? Okay, um, may I hear from um, uh, Mr. Mills.
Ms. Ambassador, are you having issues? Madam Chair, I'll try to take the host role back from Ms. Ambassador while she's getting her issues resolved. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jessica, um, she actually can't hear anyone right now, so she's just, she's working on it. Okay. Uh, can I hear from um, Mr. Mills, Don Mills? You're unmuted, go ahead. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm Don Mills. I'm an architect. I'm representing Park Street School at 63 to 69 Bremer Street. Can you hear me fine, Madam Chair? Yes, please tell us uh, what your support our opposition is based on. Uh, the school has received over 160 letters of opposition sent to the ZBA from parents, from abutters, from um, staff members of the school. Okay. I, all I want to know is that this is a one family with two parking spaces. We understand that the um, groundwater system needs to be finalized. Um, so this is really what we are looking at. What is the school's opposition on on these violations that are actually the ones that are in front of us? Madam Chair, we support the denial of the building code violation. We support the change to the GCOD and resubmission. And uh, there have been this discussions with the neighborhood and the school whereby the plans were changed. The architect mentioned earlier that the interior is being built exactly as it was. That's true in terms of the discussions we've had, but not true in terms of the plans that are before you. The difference between the plans that are before you and what the uh, uh, applicant has promised to the neighborhood is that they've agreed to do a sloping rear roof on the third floor instead of a full height third floor as these plans represent. So uh, our understanding is that they need to submit revised plans with the revised FIR calculations to ISD before this can move forward. Okay, um, so this, how does, okay, so you are requesting a sloping rear roof at the top of the, at the topmost floor? Correct, to replicate okay. the prior building envelope. Okay, okay, um, okay, so your, um, let's see, so Park Street is in support of the, B, of the denial of building code relief? Um, you understand the need for revised plans for the groundwater system, and um, you are interested in the slope of the rear roof. Correct. And that takes care of everything. Okay, is there anybody else who's, um, thank you, Mr. Mills, is there anybody else who needs to speak? Uh, Madam Chair, I believe the other two raised hands that I see um, already spoke, David Andrew Trust and Robert Whitney. Okay. I see in so, the chat that uh, uh, Lauren Brody wrote that John Spillane from Council Box Office is unable to speak. I'm searching for him, but I don't see his name on anywhere where I'd be able to unmute him. Okay. So I think he sits in, in the chat, and, and by you uh, uh, reading it out loud, it's in the record. So we and um, but sure, but, it's the quarter opposition. So yes, exactly. Uh, can we get a sense from Lauren Brody if he's in support, if the counselor is in support or in opposition? In the meantime, um, may I have a response from um, the applicant, whoever chooses to respond, um, because I understood that the envelope was supposed to stay exactly the same. Um, can you respond to this sloping rear roof thing? Yeah, it is absolutely our intent to do the slope rear roof that will match the roof line at 11 and the previous roof line at 7. So um, is that reflected in the drawings that are uh, in front of uh, the board and which page is it on? We, we haven't resubmitted the, uh, the rear slope roof. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, can I make a suggestion? There seem to be uh, enough between the, the groundwater issue, between the uh, building envelope, the slope roof, and between the building code relief, which will require some redesign. It sounds to me like a deferral might be in order because they've got some. Well, I, I, I'd actually like to um, surface all the issues and hold everything for signature until we get the re revised drawings. 
because um, this this has um, taken up a lot of space, a lot of time. Um, and so I'd like to have a decision made by us. We can hold for signature until we get water and sewer and hold for signature until we get the revised drawings. And we have an understanding that the applicant has in fact touched base with the abutters. Okay. Excuse uh, me, excuse me, Chair. May, uh, may I hear from Lauren Brody okay. on um, what is happening with Councillor Bach and is she in support or in opposition? Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board, are you able to hear me? Yes, thank you. I apologize for all the technical difficulties. Uh, Councillor Bach's position is in alignment with the Boston Groundwater Trust to request that the ZBA hold its signatures on any approval on 7 Beaver Place pending the submission of updated plans in regard to its groundwater management systems and an associated updated approval from BWSC. Our office has received extensive communications from neighbors and abutters concerned about the groundwater management systems proposed in the filed plans and their impacts for adjacent properties. Additionally, our office is grateful to the proponents for adjustments in their plans in order to restore the slanted roof line of the prior building and relocate HVAC systems to the second rather than third floor deck and hope to see those plans submitted as well. Our office is also aware of potential fire code issue regarding the rear windows. However, the counselor is not well versed in this matter to weigh in, but ask the board to review this matter as well. That's Councillor Bach's statement. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, so may I have a motion, please? I, I, I'll, I'll make a motion. I, I just want to make it clear though that this is this is an exception this is not usually what we do yeah that usually you you come prepared especially after being deferred already um, yeah but i'll make a motion to approve hold the signature for um for custom groundwater trust and um, um, ending plans to full proof is there a second? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat the motion? I couldn't hear it with the phone going off. Uh, mo mo motion to approve, hold the signature for the data ground system, and uh, plans with the sloped roof. Is there a second? In design review. Is, uh, is, I'm not sure, Beacon Hill, uh, they, I don't think it's, this might be, this might not be subject to design review, but may I have a second, please? Oh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry, did somebody second this? Second, Tyrone. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. I think there's way too many things that are unresolved. Okay, motion carries um, because there are five in support. So just know that this is not to the applicant. Just know that this is not going anywhere until we get all these pieces in place and we are assured that groundwater is taken care of and that we understand what that roof uh, design is going to look like. Thank you. Following your next case, calling BOA 1046244, 3305 to 3307 Washington Street. This is to combine existing lots 2257, lot 2258. It's a one, 9,378 square foot lot. Addition renovation to create four story mixed use building. Change Oxford office to one apartment and intern overnight accommodation to a commercial space, multifamily dwelling, 14 units, and garage, 12 vehicles. Upper floor units will have individual roof decks. Evaluation of Article 55, Section 40, off street parking is insufficient. Article 55, Section 40, off street loading is insufficient. Article 55, Section 40.5A, off street parking design and maneuverability. Article 55, Section 41, conforming with existing building alignment. Article 55, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 55, Section 8, the commercial space is forbidden. Article 55, Section 8, accessory parking is forbidden. Article 55, Section 9, the lot area condition dwelling units is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the building height is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 55, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, front yards insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, side yards insufficient. 
and Article 55, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Tim Johnson, architect, 599 East Broadway, Boston, with my client, Brian Markland. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this project was before the board this past March. An addition renovation to create 15 residential units, one commercial with eight parking spaces. At that time, the board felt the project was too dense and gave us the opportunity to defer. Subsequently, on April 7th, the BPDA gave the project team a building program of nine residential units and one commercial unit for the site. Out of, out of respect for the Jamaica Plain Civic Associations, we asked the BPDA for a 10th affordable unit and they agreed. Therefore, the project before the board is an addition renovation to create 10 residential units, one commercial unit, and 10 parking spaces combined two lots. The existing Victorian building will be largely preserved and renovated into four duplex units. The six unit addition will occupy the vacant parcel to the left of the existing building. This is a corner lot, so the 10 parking spaces will be accessed via Ophir Street. This project has support from the Director of Butters. So I'm sorry. Um, so this is, I'm, tell us which drawing we should look at. So I'm seeing, this is the corner of Oaf. Oh, here in Washington Street, Madam Chair. Yes. Scroll um, the so please scroll down, Colette. So okay, the, thank you. This is the Victorian building that will be largely kept, in, kept intact, Madam Chair. This will be the four duplex units. And then the addition to the left on the vacant parcel will be the six flats with the commercial unit at the grid. Okay, and tell us how parking um, is going to work. If we could scroll down a few more 3D views to the site plan, please. Right, uh, next one, please. Thank you. So you can see Ophir Street on the right. We have an existing curb cut where we'll access eight garage parking spaces. And this isn't the site plan, so two off-street parking spaces were cut off at the top. So there'll be 10 spaces uh, provided, Madam Chair. Okay, and are there roof decks on the addition or on the second building? There are, Madam Chair. They're dedicated to the top units and they're accessed via bulkheads with roof doors. Okay. Um, Mr. Olick, how are the plans? The plans are adequate. Okay, any questions from the board? I, I have a comment. Um, I, no. I, I'm glad to see you went with 10 with one affordable. I think that nine would have been a, a sad thing, and I'm glad to see you did that. So I just want to commend that. Yeah. Yes, we were seeing a lot of a lot of nines, weren't we? Um, is um, anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. On behalf of my colleague Lindsay Santana, we would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We have 17 letters of support, one letter of opposition. Madam Chair, there are no raised hands. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Jeff Hampton from the BPDA. Uh, I would like to echo Tim Johnson's uh, comments that the BPDA is in support of this redesign. Uh, last uh, time that they had the hearing, we were against this proposal, but I can confirm that the BPDA is in support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hi, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Council of Sabi George's office. I'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. So, Tim, I'd like to ask if there's any occupancy in the basement of the existing Victorian. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, this was in the pipeline before uh, the board uh, was adamantly opposed to bedrooms in the basement. Uh, we do have bedrooms in the basement of the existing house, and we're more than happy to relocate those to the first floor. And so, Colette, can you pull those up? Um, so how many bedrooms are in that basement? Uh, there's, they, these are the duplex units, so one bedroom in each unit is in the lower level. Okay, okay. 
Okay. Um, so given that information, um, and given the fact of the new construction being um, so close to this Victoria, may I have a motion, please? I, I'd like to make a motion to approve um, with BPDA design review, um, especially on the addition part, maybe like a mansard roof or something to make it look more with everything else, but a motion. And then um, no no bedrooms no, uh, in the basement? No, yeah, no bedroom and re relocate the bedrooms out of the basement. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we're going to take like a 10 minute break because I want to make sure that um, Mr. Costas is on for the rest of our conversation. Mr. Lager is on for the rest of our Madam, Madam Chair, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, yeah. before we go any further, is, is Perrin Street on, uh, Madam Ambassador? Because I have it in my records that they're going to be deferring. Yes, Tom is for the on. Tom? Thank you, Madam Chair. Are you moving forward on your project? Has he been unmuted? Mr. Rivero? Mr. Rivero? Uh, are you going to be moving forward on your project or are you deferring, sir? I would like to defer. We've done a downscale from four units with a four car garage to three units with a three car garage. Okay. Hold, no on. Longer, hold on. No longer be any better. Hold Mr. Rivero, stop. Um, may I have a motion for deferral? Make a motion for deferral. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. You'll have a date of March 23rd at 1230. Okay. Uh, does that take care of everything? Uh, like Madam Chair, I'm sorry. i got to read them into the record. I'm just sorry. I can't handle myself. For the, two, for the two cases for Perrin Street, BOA 1023262-2628 Perrin Street, and BOA 1023265-26R Perrin Street into the record. Thank you. Thank you. So we can take our break now? Okay, we're going to take our 15... March 23rd was the date, Madam Chair, as I said. March 23rd at 12.30. So um, we're going to take a 10-minute break, and we will resume precisely at 3.40. Please uh, keep an eye out for... Um, cost us so that we can um, uh, proceed when he gets on and that he doesn't assume we're done. appeal for um, December 8th is back in session. Um, Mr. Fortune, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling the next two cases, calling BOA 9712876643 Morton Street. There is a companion case, BOA 9712866643 Morton Street. This is a change of auction from child care center to a three-family dwelling. No work to be done. The violation is Article 60, Section 9. The additional lot area is insufficient. And Madam Chair, we have building code. This is the ninth edition, 780 CMR 903.2. Occupancy of an automatic sprinkler requirement. All use group R requires automatic sprinkler system. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joseph Feaster from the law firm of McKenzie & Associates, 183 State Street. Uh, Sweet Six, Boston, and I just want to say I've I've ordered out for dinner and for hotel spaces for you guys, uh, but uh, this is we, the longest we, hearing that I've ever participated in. Treatment too. So, Mr. Fisto, <laughs> can you hold on a second? I just want to make sure we have a full um, a full board here. Uh, Mr. Fortune, you're here. Yes. Mr. Pollock, you're here. Mr. Ruggiero, are you back? 
I'm here. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Legros, are you back? Uh, Mr. Kendall, are you on? I'm on, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. DeVoe, are you on? Okay. Uh, so it looks like we are a six member board. Please give me a heads up when Mr. Legris joins us again. Go ahead, Mr. Feaster. Madam Chair, thank you very much. And I want to say hello. It's unfortunate I won't have the pleasure of seeing all of you in person, as particularly the new members of the board who I've uh, yet to meet. So welcome to the Board of Appeals. Uh, it's a great board, and uh, I'm happy to be here today. Along with me uh, is the architect, Michael Washington, uh, Ms. Thomas. I believe he may be on phone if you could uh, admit him. Um, one of my co-counsels who I'm training to take over for me, uh, board members, but uh, Timothy Frazier is on. Uh, the principal person who will be speaking with you today uh, will, will be Michael Washington. And I know you want to talk about the uh, building code initially. So let me start there. Uh, with at least trying to frame it and see if I can convince the, the board of the reason why we're uh, still seeking to build a code relief. Um, this three family building is owned by the uh, by the a church in 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 Dorchester um, um, Holy Tabernacle and they had this was a three family home that they used and converted to a daycare center back in 1996. And it served as a daycare center from 1996 to 2016. Um, for my understanding, some of this was, uh, this may have been more than just during the day, there may have been overnight as well. But as uh, Siobhan Scott is also on here, Ms. Thomas, uh, so I would have her or possibly uh, Mr. Washington might be better uh, to elaborate on that particular aspect of it. There has been and there is now a very elaborate and intricate alarm system, which I would like them to speak to you on. Um, so, Mr. And, Mr. Feaster, so is this alarm system related to the automatic sprinkler system? Are you are you saying to us that that alarm system is in lieu of the sprinkler system? Well, that's what you, well, see, I, uh, Madam Chair, you've gotten to know me too well over the years. And uh, yes, what I am attempting to do here is to say that in that the the so-called change of loose is a slight change uh, from or even a lesser change than what was there previously. And yes, in re direct response to your question, I am trying to say that this elaborate alarm system should be uh, should sub can substitute for the uh, sprinkler system. Yes. Uh, a sprinkler system, which, by the way, would, uh, we, we're, yes, in, in keeping with the possibility that the board would not to, uh, permit this, is somewhere in the vicinity, I believe, of 30 something thousand dollars for them to install for, for this three family. Okay, so Mr. Washington, uh, may I have Mr. Wa Michael Washington on? Mr. Washington, can you s tell us, you know, you're a registered architect. Um, can you tell us that, in fact, this is a good um, a good response to this um, this request for building code? Okay, I just want to make sure, first show you. Can you hear me? Well, see me? Yes, we can. Oh, great! <laughs> I thought I missed you. Uh, yes, uh, this is it's. Uh, we've been working on this for years uh, for the church and what's happening is um, the church was changed from a three family house to um, daycare and it came got to the point where they need to change back and we only want to change back to a three family house there's not any construction necessary so, so, so mr washington i i only just completely zeroed in on this request for building code relief because you know we take this code relief very seriously we do not want to be in a position of having people put at risk um so i ask you with your architect hat on and your knowledge of the building code uh, whether this is a 
a true substitution for an automatic sprinkler system? Well, when we first came in, we asked for relief on the uh, sprinkler system, and we've decided that um, uh, it'd be better to go ahead and put the sprinkler system in now. So we, we're going to uh, withdraw our request for uh, for um, relief on that, and we're going to put the sprinkler system in. Okay. So may I have a motion on the building code for denial? Motion to building code relief. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, Mr. Feaster. Well, you, you see, you learned that the lawyers are the last ones to know the changes. I know. Can yeah. you know yeah. I? I'm still going to charge for the day, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. And please, our members know that Mr. Feaster was our past chair of the board, um, and so he knows the uh, the how the winds change here. So go ahead, Mr. Feaster, on the on the occupancy. Yes, um, I will have Mr. Washington do that as well. The reality is, as we, as was indicated, there is not going to be any uh, any work done on this particular building. The issue here, the, the zoning violation, is is, is simply. Um, um, let me just see here. The zoning violation is that um, was I, for the change of occupancy is that it was only uh, nine there was only nine feet uh short of what was required for so washington can you elaborate on this yeah they're they're really there two joe uh, one is the number of units that they changed to originally they changed from three units back to um Oh, and to a daycare center, and we will just want to change from a daycare center back to the three units. Okay, no so, change of occupancy. so yeah. it's a change of occupancy. So tell us, is there any basement uh, living? Basement? Yeah, is there any rooms, any bedrooms? There's no the living space under it. Okay, no, There's nothing a, in the basement. That's and, right. and it looks like this is a fairly typical looking triple decker. Yes, it is. That's okay. Mr. Ehrlich, can you please, how are the plans? Oh, the plans are fine. There's no work to be done. So it's, uh, this is a very simple uh, uh, process. Okay. Is anybody, any questions from the board? Is yeah, Mr. Ehrlich, I just want clarification. If there's no work to be done, but they're putting a sprinkler system in and an off system, so there is work to be done. Am I not correct in saying that? Well, I suppose that's, I suppose that there's no architectural work to be done. You're right. There's mechanical work to be done. Yeah, okay. no architectural Right. Okay. And I, I would like to just make sure you're aware of one of the... Hold on, Mr. One other thing that we were, we, we actually, we think, we thought we needed relief on, and that was the fact that with three families on 7,500 square feet, we were actually nine square feet short of what's required. Okay. So, we, so um, thank you for putting that on the record, okay, because it sounds like it's the lot requirement. Um, so, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, plans are adequate. Uh, we have clarification on Mr. Fortune's question. Is anybody here to speak in support? Madam Chair, uh, Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Whitney Celestin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I held an abutters meeting for this project. Um, the, the Wellington Association was present at that um, abutters meeting. We'd like to go in support of this change of occupancy from the daycare to the three family, purely because it's adding more housing to the area and it's returning to its old status. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other raised hands. Uh, Madam Chair, could I, if I might impose one moment, Siobhan Scott, the owner is on, I don't know. Uh, no, it's, it's all good, Mr. Over. Okay, thank May you. I have a motion, please. To approve. Is there a second? Second, Tyrone. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Um, um, Mr. Washington, Mr. Feaster, good luck. Thank, thank you very much. I'll sit tight on the next case. Okay. Well, your next case, calling VOA 103-9457, 1R Lorenzo Street. Listing combined parcels 274-2727 and erecting new two and a half 
two-family dwelling with rear decks and four off-street parking spaces. The violation of Article 65, Section 42, the application of dimensional requirement conforming with an existing building alignment, Article 65, Section 9, the number of allowed habitable, habitable stories has been exceeded. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, good afternoon, members of the board. Joseph Feaster from the law firm of McKenzie and Associates, 183 State Street, Suite 6, Boston, Massachusetts. Joining me is my colleague, Timothy Frazier. Um, the architect on this matter is, is uh, Timothy Johnson, who you've heard from uh, previously on, on a matter. And my client, uh, Shirley Bragel and Michael Bragel are on as well. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Johnson to um, proceed with presenting the plans to the board. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Feaster, uh, Tim Johnson, architect, 599 East Broadway, Boston. Madam Chair, members of the board, my client, Shirley and George Bragel, are proposing to erect a two-story, two-and-a-half-story, two-family dwelling with four off-street parking spaces and combined two lots. These will be two duplex units. Uh, if we can scroll to... These will be two duplex units. The first floor and lower level unit will be a two bedroom unit at 1,324 square feet. Those are fine. Those images are fine. And the upper duplex unit will be three bedroom unit at 1,330 square feet. Uh, all units will have rear decks and we will build to the stretch energy code uh, per city code. That's a quick overview. Okay, Mr. Um, Johnson, I'm looking at Lorenzo Road. Looks like these are all attached dwellings. And it looks like uh, there's maybe five of them. The last one ends with a brick with a bit of a bay window. And is, the, is that vacant lot next to it, the lot where this proposed dwelling is going to go in? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, that has... Uh that is correct, um, and the lot behind it, which is landlocked, we're combining the, the lot that fronts Lorenzo with that landlocked parcel. This previously had an address of 6 Berry Street, uh, but we are orienting the uh, building toward Lorenzo Street. And is it a separate lot, or um, you know how, um, is that a separate deeded landlocked lot in the back? Is that what it is? Uh, it, it, it currently it is, ma'am, and that's why we are proposing to the, to combine that landlocked lot with the lot that fronts Lorenzo. Okay, and uh, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Mark, you're on mute. Thanks, thanks, Mark. Uh, I wasn't aware. Um, the, the drawings are a little problematic. I, I understand the reasoning for reorienting from Barry to Lorenzo, but by doing that, you created a rear uh, dwelling and front yard parking because the, the the given that the entrance now is from Lorenzo, you got four cars that are uh, in front of the house, and so that's a problem. The other problem. Um, is that we've got below grade bedrooms. Yes, the, uh, the lot that fronts Lorenzo, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, contained, contained the original parking for the property. There was an existing garage there. So the, the use of that front parcel has not changed. It's the existing driveway. Existing no, I, I know, but by reorienting it from front, the, the approach being a, from Barry to Lorenzo, you've essentially moved it from being backyard to front yard parking. Right, well, it came, it came out of necessity. You can see Barry Street access was only eight feet wide to the, to the landlocked parcel. Uh, there was no room to, uh, to navigate uh, from the parcel to Barry Street uh, through that eight foot wide uh, passageway. That's what I, know, I mean, I, uh, Mr. Johnson, I, I understand the logic. I'm just saying that the uh, consequence, uh, intended or unintended, is that the result is front yard parking, which is a, which is a problem for this board. So, so, um, so let's go 
to the um, building, the proposed two and a half unit building, two two unit building. So I missed out. So this is to erect a two and a half story, two family dwelling. Can we have a rendering to see what that looks like? Uh, and, yes. and what is the square foot of each unit? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Again, these are duplex units. So the first and lower level is a two bedroom at approximately 1300 square feet. And the upper duplex unit is a three bedroom at approximately 1350 square feet. And to address Mr. Ehrlich's uh, con uh, comment about uh, bedrooms in the lower level, uh, unlike the older utility basements, which are seven, eight feet, eight feet below grade, this floor is five and a half feet below grade with a generous five foot by five foot window well and interior perimeter drain to a sump. And we are outside the 100 year floodplain. So it is going to be high quality interior space even at the lower level. So Mr. Johnson, um, the issue really is that this is new construction. And I think with new construction, there is a way that you can completely avoid having units in the basement. You know, um, so I, I, I toss that out there because I think we are really getting overly very concerned about the fact that we are seeing all this basement space. And then this building on top of it is a building behind buildings. Um, so, you know, there could be there could be density issues clearly related to this. Um, so I need to understand from you what what your client's perspective is and from Ms. Mr. Feaster uh, about eliminating those bedrooms in the basement. Um, playroom is fine, but bedrooms we are having continue to have issues with. Well, Madam Chair, I'll speak to the, the, uh, the question. I, I was made aware that this was of concern uh, that this board has had in recent years uh, with regards to that. However, uh, in going through the community process and speaking of that, as well as what the point that was raised by Mr. Johnson as far as the uh, non-impact because of being in a outside of a 100 of year flood zone, uh, trying to create different types and, and a mixing of, of unit types to provide the maximum space. It was felt that this would be desirable. And in the conversations with the community, that did not become an issue. And I know that this board has had that concern even when I was there in certain neighborhoods because certain neighborhoods had that. If that is a pressing concern for the board, then obviously um, we would rather not have you deny this matter. We'd, we'd like to go back and take the opportunity to address that particular concern in a, another redesign. I'm a little more concerned about the point that, uh, that Mr. Ehrlich has raised. This too was a conversation that took place with the community with regards to the reorientation of the property. And that reorientation was done not only because of what Mr. Johnson said is about, about the narrowness of the access from Berry Street, but there was also some matters pertaining to the water and sewer connections that were there that were resolved. So this was a generous conversation uh, with, the, with the community and was found to be an acceptable in a uh, community meeting that we held on October 29th. So I, I know the board's propensity and general objections to um, front yard uh, parking. I see this a little bit different, Mr. Ehrlich, only from the standpoint of, of, of course, you are correct, that this previously had a garage that was in the rear. But I would, uh, I would say that uh, and I would ask Mr. Johnson to give some examples because I believe that uh, you've had some of those, Mr. Johnson, that you might be able to persuade the board to support this. Well, uh, <clears throat> again, the, uh, the building proposed to family replaces a two family on that landlocked parcel. Um, the parking on the parcel that fronts Lorenzo uh, is shown is replacing a dilapidated garage. So we are not mixing uses. One prop, one parcel had housing and the other parcel had parking. As Mr. 
Feaster said we had to reorient it because of the access from Barry Street and the, and the water and sewer coming off Barry was shared with the other properties and it had to be a very uh, difficult situation with the abutters. So all new sewer and water will be coming off Lorenzo. Okay. Well, just uh, the sort of the, to complete this conversation, um, I completely understand why uh, you did what you did. I, I just don't know how we handle the, the the reality that it is front yard parking, and perhaps because it's a that's a rear building and landlocked, maybe we look at it uh, somewhat differently. But the reality is, it, it just is front yard parking, and with respect to the basement units. Um, as Mr. Johnson said, they, I looked at the plans and the section, it's five and a half feet below grade. That's, um, that's, uh, that's substantial. You know, the, the, as you know, the, the minimum to the, uh, the sill height for a window is 44 inches. So you got five and a half feet um, uh, of just wall space uh, that um, is underground. And, and I think that this board increasingly is trying to avoid that and to, and to, Mr., uh, to the chairs, comment that a new construction, it's one thing to argue that, it's, that that's the only option in renovation, but new construction should have more flexibility. So um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This went through a, a robust community process. There was two abutters meeting for this proposal. Uh, and they were in contact with the Port Norfolk Civic Association on numerous occasions. Um, the merits of the zoning weren't of concern through this process. There were concerns um, related to, um, as uh, Mr. Feaster made note of, the um, sewage connections from the private way on Berry Street and the parking situation. Um, so I just want to note that for the board, but otherwise we would be as part of this proposal. Thank you. I'm sure there are no raised hands. Okay, um, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'm going to make a motion to deny without okay. prejudice, so that uh, the applicants can come back with uh, with a redesign that speaks to some of the concerns. Um, so, Mr. So Mr. Ehrlich, is that better to do it that or defer it one more time? They've heard about our basement issues. They might come back faster if they if it's a deferral. Well, if it's without prejudice, they can come back as fast as they want. So either way is it, fine. I have no preference. Okay. Well, uh, Madam Chair, may I just speak to that particular point? Uh, uh, I would ask for the board's indulgence for the deferral because if we come uh, starting with a, in particularly with the COVID and trying to get uh, the project managers in ISD's attention on some of these matters has not been as swift and, and that's understandable. So uh, if we had a denial without prejudice, Mr. Ehrlich, we have to start over again. So I would, I would, order, I would. Uh, okay. Invite okay. the board to if they would give us a deferral of time so we can come back uh, sometime. I would say uh, possibly in February. Uh, that would be desirable. Okay, I, uh, that, that's it's a good project, and and I'm and I'm sure that you can solve uh, some of the issues that have been raised. So I'll make a motion to defer. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second. For those in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. We have a date of March 23rd at 12.30. Okay, Mr. Feaster, it's a little before you turn one year older, huh? That's right. You remember it. I was just going to say that. That's exactly right. Well, maybe I'll get a birthday present uh, early, so we'll okay. shall see. <laughs> I want to wish you all a happy holiday and hopefully a much safer and healthier 21. And same to you. Good luck, Joe. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair, calling the last case to call of the chair, case BOA 1062676, 11 Daner Avenue. The, the petitioner seeks a determination that Inspectional Service Department aired an issue in the permit. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, I will note that Mr. Ligris is back on the call. Thank you. I saw, I saw that. Thank you. Um, so is there anybody, is Mr. Ralph Rosati or a representative of his on this, on this, um, this meeting? 
I don't see them in the chat. Is there any other names they may be under? No. Um, oh, there's a caller with a hand raised from them. Okay, Mr. Kirker, are you, um, do you know anything about Ralph Rosati? Yes, Madam Chair, he is, he had a doctor's appointment today and he's getting a CAT scan, so he was unable to attend. So you are attending on, be, on his I'm behalf? He, he, uh, he didn't write anything, but he did tell me by phone that I should be there, yes. Okay, thank you. Is there, and is there anybody here that re represents the property owner? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Attorney John Pulgini on behalf of the property owner. Okay. So, Mr. Pulgini, I have the first question for you before we go into, um, into a decision. I just need clarification on that office use. Can you tell me what it is that that office use is proposed for? Uh, yes, the office use is um, it's going to be accessory. Um, basically, where people would drop their rent checks off in a manager's oh, office. Oh, God's sakes. So it's going to be a, a, the building management office? That's correct. And and you're stating that it's an accessory use? To the main use of the building, correct. Accessory to main use. Okay. So, Ms. Ms. Ambassador, can you oh. please mute? Can you, now that we know who's here. I'm, I'm talking, sorry. Uh, who is this? Um, so what I want to do, Ms. Ambassador, is mute every single person but the board members, okay? All set. Okay, everybody's muted. Shirley Bragel is muted. Um, everybody else. Okay, good. Okay, so now we, uh, as you know, for these uh, cases, we usually reach out to the city of uh, law, law department. And the reason I asked Mr. Pulgini for a, a, a clarification is that my notes had said that it was accessory use to the main building management, um, and the IS and the law department needed clarification on that. So now that we have that, uh, the we will um, essentially. Uh, state that we are looking at this and we feel and as stated by the law department in their um, in their um, information to us that this is located in the Cleary, Cleary slash Logan Square area. Thus, the parking requirement is one parking space per dwelling unit. I know there was some question as to which parking district this was in. So, uh, I mean, sorry, which neighborhood shopping district this was in. So, based on, on the analysis, it's in the, clear, in the Cleary Logan Square neighborhood shopping district. Thus, the parking as an accessory use, the ratio is one to one. And the building uh, management office is also accessory to this residential use. Thus, the recommendation is that ISD um, did not err in issuing this permit. So may I have a motion to that effect? Uh, motion that ISD did not err in the issuing of the permit. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Kirker, for, for coming, uh, uh, being part of the meeting today, and Mr. Polgini, likewise. <clears throat> Madam Chair, the last order of business is the hearings that were held at uh, 1010 Mass Ave uh, last Thursday, and I'm going to call them into the record, and we just need a motion at the end. So I'm going to call each one into the record. Case BOA 1122437102 High Street was a renovation. A kitchen, garden level, and 145 square foot. Rare garden, it was approved. Case BOA 999-494, 6 Mount Vernon was heard to, was, it was deferred to 211 of the subcommittee, uh, 2021. Case BOA 111-802-7135, Athens was heard today. Case BOA 102-9539-66, Dorchester Street was denied. Case BOA 113 15 Nera Avenue was a complete gut rehab of the existing structure was approved. 
Case BOA 1121041 36 Gaston Street was deferred to the subcommittee. Uh, I'm sorry, it was deferred to the full board on 112 2021 at 1230. Case BOA 1130250 251 Hill Avenue. It was denied without prejudice. Case BOA 1141148 18 Spalding Street. It was the new dormer on the right side of the home and extend dormer size on the left side. It was approved with BPDA. BOA 1127963-23 McDonald Street was to prepare a site for a sunroom addition and removing the siding. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1099592-215 Dana Avenue was a first floor, second floor, and attic renovation. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1090178-7 Arbor View Road was to replace, <coughs> I'm sorry, it was a two-story two addition on the north of the rear yard and an entry vestibule that's the south front yard was approved with BPDA. And case BOA 1123884, 3 Paragon Road. It was a raise the roof in existing house and build a new addition. It was approved with BPDA. And that concludes the subcommittee's report of last Thursday of 2010, Thursday, December 3rd. Babe, we need a motion. A motion to concur with the recommendation of the subcommittee. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Well, congratulations. We Chair? Completed. Yes. Madam Chair, this is Jim Kirker again. Sorry. We had three violations that we were our, uh, that we were in, in, uh, that we had brought forth. They have a parking garage on the first floor. Mr. Building. Mr. Coker, you just heard our decision. Um, uh, so we are looking at parking garage as an accessory use to the main use. It's not a parking garage. Okay, so uh, Mr. Uh, we are just concluding our, our meeting here, Mr. Coker. So thank you. Um, to the hey, we go, we go to, the to my fellow board members, thank you. Um, I we as I said before, I'd like to have a meet and greet on uh, Tuesday. We have a number of alternate members, a few uh, new members, and I'd like to have a meet and greet on Tuesday um, at ten o'clock. Okay, so uh, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, and uh, Kevin, if you can please help us with that. Everybody else is on the call. See you in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.